What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. But that was a lot of the influence of the outsiders mm. coming in and basically telling them, well, you got to do this now. And so some of the things that has happened to a couple of the tribes in the past past really kind of pushed, I think, these two over the edge and said, absolutely not. We are not having any contact. And the other problem is the youth that are being born into the Shuar community and tribe are getting glimpses of the bigger cities and leaving. <laughs> Welcome to New Jersey. Hey, thanks. It's a little different than Florida up here this time of year, so I hope you don't mind like getting one day reprieve from the beautiful 85 degree weather down there. No, that's perfectly okay. When the, I... cold, the cold's good for you. It is. A little <laughs> bit. It's more the alkaline side of chemistry. <laughs> Although someone told me on the plane that it was snowing. No, no. I was it, like, it's definitely not That's snowing. up in like New York right I now. I would have known if it was snowing. Yeah, that would be a fun <laughs> landing though. Like if, no. if it were snowing on the landing, you ever do that before? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you were a flight attendant. I was. You definitely did that. In Alaska. I could never. In January. Oh. Oh, what, d does the plane go like this? Yeah, all the time. There's actually, a, I believe it's Juno, where they have to take it uh, at an angle when they land between these two peaks and these mountains. It's a whole trip. Oh, no. It's amazing. No. It no, that amazing. sounds, that sounds like death. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the kind of guy, like, when, when the plane's coming down like, on a clear day <laughs> and the wings are doing that, I'm like, yo, this is it. This like, is it's it. It's over. This is how it ends. <laughs> Make your last text. No, Wait. yeah. But weren't you just in in Ecuador too? So you, you went to like the equator. You were you it were in the best weather now here in Jersey. I'll tell you what, the sun is definitely hotter there. Yeah, it's it, strong. They don't. <laughs> there's no such thing as a season there, is there? Because it's literally is, on the equator. So technically, it's winter. That's what they say. That's what they say. And it okay. was chilly in the mornings, sometimes at night. But I think anything under sixty is chilly. Yeah. So, yeah. And what were you doing down there? So. I went with uh, the Young Living Foundation. They're the nonprofit side of Young Living Essential Oils. And they work with a ton of different organizations around the world, whether it's you know human trafficking, you know, rescuing people from that, mm. um, orphanages in Uganda, uh, building homes in Nepal, and you know, obviously after their huge earthquake in 2016. So I've been working with them for quite a long time. Also sponsor a young man through school in Ecuador. I've been doing that for about seven years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So That's awesome. fantastic. And this is one of their first ever missions that they're doing for conservation, basically giving back to the earth. And we were there planting uh, Palo Santo, which is a very, very sacred plant to the Ecuadorians and to the world. It creates an oil. It's one of their, it's what they call holy wood or sacred wood. And That's then, a tree. It's a type it's a of tree. tree. Yeah. And it takes, um, it takes about 50 years for the plant to actually grow to maturity to when they harvest it to make it an oil, um, mm. essential oil. And uh, But the Ecuadorians will burn it as an insect repellent. And so they'll, you'll see it all over the place, mm. just burning everywhere. It's also a spiritual practice for them. So we were there reharvesting this plant because it is on the brink of uh, extinction mm. to be endangered. Uh, and that's just, because of all the logging. And it's stuff. just a ton. There's a lot of unethical harvesting practices, obviously, within the rainforest. And then, so we planted about 730 baby little baby seedling trees on these hills. How so long we, does it take to plant a tree? How many people are there, by so the way? So in our group, there was 14 people. That's it? That was it. And you then did 730 trees? So, yeah. So we had maybe a few people that helped us out too. Um, but it was funny because, again, we were kind of walking into stuff we didn't know about. This was uh, kind of a guinea pig mission to set the tone. And one of the gals said, yeah, there's this tool that you basically just plunged in the ground. It digs a hole for you and you just pop the tree in. I'm like, Awesome no idea what that's called <laughs> we get there and it's you know it's one of the you shove it in the ground and yeah. it takes about 10 minutes to dig a hole but once you get the hang of it it's, it's right, good so it's not yeah. like you're sitting there digging a grave every time no or something like that i mean with a shovel believe it or not the the holes were pretty deep we were kind of surprised but it it went by pretty quickly we had a great group of people and just ambitious we wanted to get this done um didn't reach a thousand like we hope but that how many would... days was that over so we spent two days at that you uh, planted 730 trees in two days. two days and that's not even two full days 
So it's we had a good. we had a pretty a pretty good group, and we were just you know we wanted to get it done. That's what we now, came here for. Now, how long does it take those trees to grow though? Because I mean, a lot of people have at least some idea in the Amazon. These fucking things are huge. Yeah, yeah. So been there thousands. You of could years. leave. You could leave a Palo Santo tree growing for as long as you want. Um, and there are ones that have been there for 50, 60 years untouched. In this specific area, and this is a privately owned uh, forest, if you will. And this gentleman really just. He's a hermit. He lives there by himself. He goes down like once every seven days. And native this is his guy. land native. Oh, mm. yeah. Enrique. He's a fantastic dude. And this is his land. And so he uh, joined up with Young Living and basically said, if you want to help plant more Palo Santo, you are welcome to come harvest it. Obviously, wow. Young Living has a seed to seal. So they do everything up and, the up, and up. And so they wait for the Palo Santo trees to age about 50 years before they go harvest those trees to then uh, make them into oil. Oh, wow. So you're planting something that's not going to be used for half a century, yeah. basically. Which is, is pretty wild. It's crazy When you're to doing it, you go, oh, man, this, I won't even live to even probably see this, this tree yeah, at its maturity. I was telling yeah. you really quickly in the car when this came up for a minute about my friend Paul Rosley, who I had in for episode 124. Yeah. And he... It's actually my most popular episode I ever did, but he has lived in the Amazon for the last 17 and a half or almost 18 years at this point as a conservationist, spending the majority of his time in Peru and in Ecuador. Mm. On the outskirts of Manu National Park, this guy, local guy, started going into the jungle and like leaving them piles of bananas because they're, they're hunter gatherers. They don't have, they don't have metal. They missed out on the wheel. They've never held a spoon. These are people that are out there. And so he'd leave them a machete and some bananas and they'd come take it. And then after like a year, he would start being there when they came to take it. And then after some time, he was actually able to interact with them. And he couldn't, he could only speak a few words of their language. This what do they speak? They're called the Mashkupiro tribe. And so they speak some sort of, uh, some dialect of the Yina language but this guy who was interacting with them one day they found him they call it porcupine arrows sticking up out of his body like several arrows we don't know why they killed him and you know the forget the fact that it's like the wild wild west down there right and there's so many various countries let's say funding destruction and, and more not just Cutting down trees, other things as well. Oh, yes. But the Amazon itself, like, I'm obsessed with it at this point, and it's basically, <laughs> like, it's the key to life. I mean, this thing, it, it breathes, it's responsible for 20% of the world's oxygen. It is this ecosystem where everything, from the, from the plants all the way up to the carnivores and everything in between, the insects, they all eat each other. They all end up eating each other. And it sounds like savage in a way, but... There's so much there that it's wild to me that people like you or on, on an everyday level, people like Paul have to go down there and try to help out many of the people who live there who are trying to stop all these others from coming in and destroying this, this beautiful, arguably the most beautiful spot on planet Earth as far as what it offers all of us. Yeah. It, it, I will say that my experience in the rainforest shocked me. I mean, I, I really didn't expect myself to feel that good there. And so the air is different, as you said. The, I would say the water is different, but you're not supposed to drink any of the water, <laughs> which I was like, eh, you know, choose your own adventure. Let's see how that goes. Um, you know, you're bathing with a just a bucket of water. You're, you didn't have a shower? No shower. We camped for two days. Yeah. I mean, look, this Ugh. when I when I do these humanitarian trips, I don't I don't go light. I'm just like, let's get the full experience. So I'm, I I'm loved from it. Jersey. Yeah. This is where I'm a little different. I'm like, yeah, give me a Hyatt, <laughs> give me a shower. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm right there with you, but for some reason, you know, like I I actually dig what Young Living does because they give you that full experience. You know, yeah. when I went to Nepal to rebuild homes with them, this was one big army tent and bunk beds, but no beds. They just had thing of wood, plywood, and you hopefully had your sleeping bag and there you go there's some showers but they were the uh instant hots so you either scalded yourself to death or you froze because you couldn't get the temperature just right i mean they do it right where you get the full experience so i i dug it but i will say there's there was something so amazing about the rainforest and that it really shows you that mother nature is in control you are yes. so small Yes. And learning about uh, how people 
get to where they are in some of these communities. You know, the, the mining that's going on there or the old mines that are no longer in use. You're talking I, about the gold miners. And I say that in yeah. quotes because I, I, I ask all the questions. You know, I want to know what those buildings are. Why are there people being trucked in from these certain cars and then dropped off with a bag and don't know where they went off into the forest and... These are just people who are working at the mines, but to learn that there was, uh, you know, mercury poisoning into the water. So there's a lot of reasons why you don't drink the water and they drink fruit juice and they boil everything. So all your juice is warm. It's just a trip. Yeah. It's just a total trip and absolutely loved every second. It, it definitely stretched me out of my comfort zone. And I thought I could have dealt with anything after Nepal. So this was... How long ago were you in Nepal again? Uh, 2017. Okay. So it was after the 2016 earthquake that pretty much pummeled them. Oh, wow. You were there right after. Yeah. Yeah. And it was amazing. This is one of their efforts that was really just born out of when the earthquake happened. Gary Young, who's the the founder of Young Living, who's now uh, passed, when he heard about it, he flew, he was in Japan at the time working on finding, I think, another wolfberry farm, uh, which is a fantastic berry for longevity that the Chinese drink. Um, but he heard about it and he said, don't, don't take me home, divert my flight. We're going to go mm. to Nepal and I want to find out where I can help. And so he chose this village, uh, Yarsa and they were completely devastated. And he said, nope, I'm going to help. And he bought a massive clay brick maker, plopped it down on this hill and it's at 8,000 feet, you know, whatever. And it's pretty wild. And he he rebuilt these homes and rebuilt and built schools and now a woman's wow. center. And so what the foundation has done for those areas is, has been pretty amazing. And so it's going to be fun to see where we take this conservation effort because frankly, it's different, but it's so important. It's vital. Yeah. Yeah. And like the, the thing that a lot of people I know is a misconception. I would have never understood, but something Paul explained to me, it's a little different with what you were doing because what, what was the name of that tree again? Palo Santo. Palo Santo. So that's one of the trees that has specific healing mm -hmm. substances we can use from it, right? Yes. That's what you're saying? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to get too lost in the weeds and be way above my pay grade <laughs> if I start going tree by tree, <laughs> but with like the general deforestation yeah. Yeah. that is for the logging business where they're not trying to like necessarily extract medicine, but they're trying to just get wood to use for homes or whatever the fuck they use it for. Mm -hmm. A huge misconception is that, oh, you could just replant trees. That is not, as Paul has explained it to me, at all what you can do. So that's not what you guys were doing no. down there because, you know, these trees are thousands of years old. The the strength of their wood that is built over time is significantly more than a tree that's, say, 20 years old or something. So if you have... For example, someone building a house, like I know one of Paul's donors is like a huge architecture guy, which is great that he's like so into this, into this cause. And he's like, you can't build a home with that new wood on those new trees because I'll, he's like, I'll have to redo the foundation inside of a decade because it'll fall apart. Yeah. So what we really have to do, and it certainly counts for all the trees that are for medicinal purposes and things like that, of course. What we really have to do is figure out how to use other means to get our wood sources because we're, we're cutting down things that, that can't be replaced because it becomes a battle against time. Absolutely. And th I think this has a lot to do, just as you said, education, not knowing which tree, how the maturity and the symbiosis of how the rainforest works together. I mean, just to, to walk into it and see that everything is completely connected. You really get to see that in the rainforest. And yeah. There's trees that I'm surprised are like melons almost. There's yeah. massive trees and you smack them, they almost bounce back because they're just filled with water. Mm. And and I I really, really emphasize the need for education and looking to the natives. They know almost everything about these trees, everything about each yeah. plant, but we don't go to them to ask the questions because first of all, they're probably not going to be that thrilled about you coming in and, <laughs> and cutting down their shit anyways, yeah, I right? Why. So, you know, there was, and that was one of the great experiences that we had uh, when we, so we went from that forest to, for, you know, reforesting Palo Santo and then drove about five hours to Elkim, and that's further, even further down into the Amazon. 
I'll put that map in the corner of the screen so people can see what yeah, you're talking about. It's, it, was pretty, it was pretty deep in there. And uh, Elkeem has a one of the, I say one of the tribes uh, of the Shuar. And they're like the OG Ecuadorians, mm. right? And there's there's four tribes within the Shuar, if you will, communities in that tribe that only talk to each other. So only two. They never talk to the outside world. These are people who, if you even... Two of the four only talk to each other? Two of the four. Okay. Only talk. They won't talk to anybody on the outside. They You barely even ever see them. They're If you get into their territory, you're dead. You know, yeah, unless you look you. exactly like you, right? They'll shoot you with six foot bamboo <laughs> tips, <laughs> right, right in the head, and you'll be done before you even know what happened, <laughs> with, right? With a poison tip, just yeah. for good measure. There, yeah. it's a trip, and they have their own language, right? So if you speak Spanish, they think you're, yeah, you know, it's kind of beneath them, right? Because again, this is OG Ecuadorian, right? So uh, we worked with one of these communities, and there's a gentleman who has spent his entire life and dedicated it to knowing every single plant and mm. tree within their boundary to if it can kill you, if it's for building, if it's medicinal. I mean, that's just how he's spent his life. He's got an entire encyclopedia in his head. This wasn't, because you guys went to plant the trees on the property of a hermit, you said. Yep. Was, he, he wasn't a member of this tribe. He was his own separate nope, thing, this right? This is a totally separate thing. Okay, so, so we did you that for spent two a days. couple of days doing that. And yep. then you, how much other time, how long were you there for we besides were, that? We were, so we were in Ecuador a total of uh, eight days. Okay, so you spent roughly the other six with these tribes. And then we spent a couple more with the tribe. And then mm. a lot of it was just traveling. I, I was yeah. kind of surprised at how much time we spent traveling. Um, and then... How'd you get hooked with, up with the tribe? I will, I'm going to give all that credit to the, the leader. So Michelle, she is basically the one that's running this and she works for the foundation. She mm. was the one to find all these individuals. I don't even know how she did it. Um, she worked some magic because... After we're hearing about this tribe, there's there's no way. There's no way I could just hop online and be like, yeah, I'm going to go to right. a, I want to hang out with this tribe. <laughs> no, they look at you like, I'm sorry, what? Is that Googleable? Yeah, I is that Googleable? I didn't, I, didn't know. I didn't even know how to spell schwar when I first heard about it. I was like trying, nothing was coming up. So she did an amazing job of hooking up with... Uh, individuals who connected her to this tribe. And they're a beautiful culture. Very excited we were there, just completely welcoming. But like I said, those were two of the, you know, two of the tribes. Yeah, they're the, the two I'll talk they're the to. the two that'll talk to you, the two that want their story known. Uh, they actually uh, are building trails within their land in the rainforest to encourage ecotourism. They want people to come mm. to understand how important the rainforest is and that entire ecosystem and the symbiosis. Because if not, we're going to continue thinking that this is just a vegetation we can take. So they're really connected. I want to be careful how I say that because that can be in you know, a stronger way than I really want to put it. But they're connected with the outside world in the sense that they they have somewhat of a like you said, they want people to come in, but they also are then aware of what we have and the yeah. resources we do. And yeah. they, they're they cool having those two environments coexist. Yes. So the exact mm. opposite of the other two. Yeah. Right. And there's still, there's still certain things like, you know, they want the children only to marry within the tribes mm. uh, and such. I mean, there's still those foundational uh, things about the tribes that don't change just based on our our outside influence. They, they really only work with foundations that are just as respectful to the earth that, uh, mm. you know, that they are. So they're, they're very careful about who they allow on their land. Did you take so, pictures with any of them? Yeah. Do you have some that I can put in the, not right now, but oh, that yeah. I can put it in the corner so Absolutely. people can see? Yeah. Okay, there's, I'll put that there. There's a couple of things. There's uh, pictures. I got a video. We, cause again, the rainforest, she's a mad beast and yeah. she's got creatures that we, don't even know about but right. they've got these bugs you know kind of like we have in the states on no seams but anyways one of the gals just got covered in these little Ugh. bugs and she, you know she had a bad reaction to them so she's swelling up it was very painful for her and i have a video of one of the schwar the gentleman that knows about all the plants and hopefully he writes his book here soon i want to keep bugging him oh about he wants it. to write a book he too. does true western man he, absolutely yeah <laughs> i know well i think it's more so us trying to beg him because it's like i'll do it i'll do it if you really think it's valuable we're like absolutely let's it's get valuable. Him hooked up with double day let's go, right, come yeah, on like come, come on. on get this out there right 
hopefully that doesn't create more people coming in and cutting down your trees. But, yeah. you know, who's to say? Anyway, so he comes in with this this just plastic bottle that definitely looks used. He's got a bunch of green plants in it. It looks like it's just filled up with water. And he comes in and he just starts spinning, spraying this tincture all over her legs. And oh, wow. come to find out it's, you know, it's like a tincture. It's sugar cane alcohol, whatnot, distilling these plants. And he just says, I just know of the plants in the area that these bugs don't like and will heal up these bites for you. And just the love and the the desire to help from these people was was very heartwarming. It's just yeah. awesome. They want people to know their story. And for this tribe, it's it's tough because obviously with social media, internet, you get these these young kids who get a glimpse of the big cities. And I mean like Loja, mm. which is tiny for, you know, compared to like a U.S. city. But Quito, um, they get an idea of that and say, we don't want to live like this anymore. We're going to go to the big city. What, I mean, how, I want to choose my words carefully here, but how, oh, as you know, I'll get shit if I say this the wrong way. <laughs> How normal is it? Maybe let, let me use a I parallel saying, yeah. compared to like the Amish here. Like they don't use electricity, right? right? These guys, I take it, don't really use electricity. It's a similar type lack of normality in that way. Would you describe so it like that? I would say it's probably it's less of lack of normality. Like I was surprised to see that they have TVs in their house. Oh, they do. Like have so, that. we're talking okay. like yeah. I I honestly thought we were gonna show up because remember the first two days we're camping in the middle of a just the rainforest, no electricity, no shower, a toilet, one toilet for 25 people or whatever. And there's chickens and stuff running all over the place. So I'm, and goats and whatnot. So I'm thinking we're going to a deeper into the rainforest with a tribe. There has to be less than what we just went through. So I'm really preparing. <laughs> I was like, 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 do I'm I already, wear clothes? <laughs> I'm already roughed it enough. Like, mind you, I'm still that girl with my makeup on every morning, <laughs> my nails going. Like, I'm going to do this thing. And so we get there. They've got electricity. They have, you know, buildings and so forth. And so I was a bit surprised, but they run on a generator. So it's mm. not like they're centralized anything. They had toilets, too. You know, each like person. Like real toilets? Like real like toilets. Like porcelain? Yeah. Or like hole in the ground. No, like, no, yeah. Oh, no, the hole in the ground. That's Nepal. That was definitely a trip. Right. Got to get yeah. your squat game on really strong. Yeah, no thanks. No, yeah, it was different. <laughs> so they had like real toilets, real toilets. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't see a shower. I know they have them, but they shower down in the river or they bathe down in the river. How close are they to the city you were talking about? Like a tiny little city, like an hour and a half. That's like a small city, mm. but there, you know, an hour and a half in in the rainforest is mainly middle of nowhere stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, and and getting there too, like oh, it's not. Man. You don't have like there's not a Route 55. You no, know? nope. it's, there's it's, a lot of windy roads yeah. that are unsure. You got some random pigs that are running through them. I tell you, these these drivers are equipped and talented. The because, ones that took you out oh, there. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing. What you gotta do. Do you think that well actually I, I should ask this as well. How big is that one community you were talking about? Like like the one that the guy who was helping with the with the bug sure. wounds of, of the sh it's Shar? Shwar. 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 So how big was this one particular of the four tribes and was that the only location they're at, or is there a bunch of locations and you were just at one? So uh, there's, from what I understand, there's only four. So each have one location. That's the one community okay. and they're all families in that tribe. So not to say they married, so they don't marry. I had to ask this. I had to clarify, I'm like, if we're only marrying in the tribe, are we marrying our family to yeah. keep the, cause they want to keep the bloodline pure. No, well, that's, you yeah, have to marry. Like pure. You have, you ha yeah. That's a little Royal family thing. Can I yeah, say that? Yeah. Uh, I see two chins coming out. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some other cross eye, <laughs> getting way off here, but um, no, they just have to marry within the Schwar tribe, not their own. They can't marry obviously in their own family. So each one of those locations is a family; they're related in some way. But how approximately how big is hundred people? 
it's kind of what I, I had asked, like the size, 100 people within that one community that we stayed in. And each so you had could their... have like third cousins there. Yeah, and yeah. I, um, I was asking questions. I was really <laughs> curious because like, I mean, but then it's like, if you're going to school with them, you would know. If you're... Don't ever take me on one of these trips. I'm just warning you. So, Don't ever oh, no. take me on one no, of these. No, I tell you what. So like, for example, we had, um, you know, and I, you, you meet amazing people on these these trips. And though we're, you know, connected to Young Living, there's so many people. And so one of the gentlemen went to Nepal after I had gone. So I was one of the initial trips when they first started posting up there and helping these people rebuild their homes. Mm. Uh, he went a couple years later. And Yarsa is mainly a Buddhist and Christian community. So there's a mix. There's three levels. There's upper, middle, and lower Yarsha. Each has their own classes and differences. And he comes right in and breaks out his beef jerky and starts to give it out. To <laughs> it's also something I would do. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you will go into these communities and not know yeah. that maybe you shouldn't do certain things. And... And I don't I don't judge me. I mean, this is how you learn. You kind of learn by unfortunately offending people or finding out, you know, like for me, I don't eat a ton. So with the shuar, the way they give to people is through food. Uh, and it's a lot of food. And you're like, this is not a grape diet right here. Well, and that's okay, because <laughs> I tell people this is something they'll learn about me if they don't already, is uh this is why I can't commit my lifestyle to a fruitarian lifestyle. It's just not feasible, I think, for most people. Right. But for me, my ultimate desire is to go into these communities and be able to commune and blend. Now, if they rolled up with an armadillo like filleted in front of me, I'm probably not going to dive right into that. But I'm not going to say no to the chicken that they raised very carefully on their land and they knew. And chopped its head off right and, in front of you. No, thank God. <laughs> that again, well, I would draw my line, right? Like if there's a whole ceremony, yeah, I'd probably just bow out for a second and wait till it's cooked. But th this is uh. why I say it can't ever be 100% on that because this was their love language. And so that was giving of their whole, like they spent time to raise this chicken. They communicated with this chicken. Hey, we are literally raising you to feed us. So when they bring this food, you're, you're eating. And what I found out is if you don't finish it, that tells them you don't like it. I'm like, fuck. How big are we talking? Like, are they giving you like a full? Well, no, but I'm, I don't eat a ton. I know, right? you're like, not and like. We're, and we're working but again i just i i like to have my energy because remember the body does one of two things with yes. energy it either digests or it detoxes and for we'll me i'm like yep. i want to just go 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 with my energy and so they're bringing all this food and it's wonderful tasting food but man it's a ton and i just eventually was like i woke up one morning I'm like i'll just take coffee please <laughs> please I just, and then they kicked you out and then she kind of looked at me one of the 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 leaders of the schwar and she's uh you know she's the the female leader they're they're very female forward in their uh, leadership. You... So mm. more so they, they call the women like the tigers and the men are the, are the snakes. That's how they classify oh, I, I their gender. Like that. <laughs> so that's a little sexism right there. I mean, there, there was, but I, they, they all get along very well. I, <laughs> I still have yet to fully understand that. But um, They probably don't know what sexism is. Good for them. I mean, they're, they got a lot of kids, so yeah. I know the, the snakes are around <laughs> somewhere. Um, so... <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, um, I love how this is going. This is Keep great. Going. Yeah. So like, I just, I did my best to communicate as best as possible. Like, look, it's all very delicious, but I can't eat all of this. I don't even know how you guys consume this, but fantastic. But we did travel with some individuals who were strictly like no meat at all. Oh, oh, right. And again, I don't judge anybody in their choices. Certainly not. But I think how do you how do you really integrate into these areas and 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 communicate when you have to ask them for, for the something vegan completely chicken. vegan <laughs> chicken? Got a Beyond Burger in the back there. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> so uh. I I I, I felt, and they were all very surprised that I was the person that said, "Don't ban me from anything. Bring it all to me. Put it in front of me." I will I will eat it again unless we're 
taken some weird animal. I could think of a few examples. I'm sure there, I, I've, you know, I've, I, in my mind thought I'm waiting for this weird bear antelope, not antelope, anteater thing they have there. Oh, it's like this, dude. it's just a weird looking bear thing. I'm like, well, there's, you... Paul Rosalie told a story about <laughs> raising one of those for a year. He'd probably have a heart attack listening to that Oh, right I now. know. Like if you put that in front of me to yeah. eat, no, I'm probably be like, thank you so much, but I'm allergic. We, you were, know? <laughs> we were in, we were in a restaurant, my, my, my buddy's place after, this was actually the first time I was here. So it was me, Paul and Ryan Tate, that guy from Vet Paul mm-hmm. I was telling you about. And you, you can't trust Paul with right. with normal Americans because you never know what he's going to whip out and show him. And so this this little waitress, <laughs> she's in like high school, is like taking our order. And he goes, he elbows me, he goes, oh, watch this. And he takes out his phone. And I don't see what he's showing her. And, be, and he goes, what do you think's going to happen next? And you see her look at it and then her eyes just go, oh my God, is she going to eat that? And he's like, yep. And, and then obviously like whoever it is starts eating. I'm like, let me see this shit. And the girl is like, Traumatized, traumatized right there <laughs> he turns around shows me a video it is the cutest little six-year-old girl you've ever seen in your life from one of the tribes in the middle of bumblefuck in the amazon yep and she is eating a charred head of a monkey like full-blown and and paul's like they'll feed you that when you go there yep. and i'm like so can you say no to that he's like i mean it's a total offense to them if if you say he was saying the same thing you are. Yeah. And I'm like, so you got to eat a monkey. He's like, pretty much. Yeah. I'm like, oh my and god. It's, I, and the, uh, so the other, yeah, to your to your point about the head as well. Interestingly enough, the Shawar are the the tribe known for shrinking heads. For what? The little shrunken heads. The you what? Know, shrunken heads. You ever see? You've never seen the whole shrunken heads. Like it's a whole thing in I don't voodoo even know and witchcraft. What you're talking yeah. About. I don't know how they do it. I'm not sure I want to know how they do it. Like shrinking their own heads? The human heads. Like human heads ends up like this big. No. Yeah. You got to look it up. All right. You, we're going to pull this up. You got to pull it up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're, you're saying that- Shru- Do shrunken heads. Schwar shrunken heads. I mean, you could, yeah. Or just shrunken how do you spell heads. spell schwar? S-H-U-A-R. Yeah. Okay. Shrunken head? Yeah. We're going to start the... Oh, what the fuck? Can you see a picture of it? Yeah, I don't know I if see. I can put the... I may not put yeah, this in the corner of the screen. I don't want to get demonetized. What? Those are human heads. So they... Sh- while they're alive, they shrink them. I don't know the process. I'm not sure I want to know the process. So all these people you were talking to had like many heads and shit? No. These are things they do to people. Now, again, I'm not sure if this is a... You were a really bad, bad person. Again, I I haven't dug into this level of voodoo in my life. <laughs> I stay on the spiritual side of things, but this is a whole thing. Oh, so it's after they kill them, they shrink. I believe the so. And... I'm gonna hope so. That's oh. what I want to believe. Unless this is again, you were a bad, bad person, and they somehow can shrink your head while you're alive. Uh, don't tell the cartels about this. Okay, it's a whole thing, and and their decorations decorations yeah like, like a you, fucking lamp yeah you see some people hanging from their car rear view mirror real shit. heads yeah the schwar hanging real heads i don't the schwar and uh, the schwar didn't hang them around i think the schwar who do it they're known for so now wait, not so there's the like tribe a, there's like a 1-800 business where like if you're a tribe and you mark a bunch of people you take it to the schwar tribe <laughs> take the schwar tribe, no. drop off your dry clean and your fucking yeah. human heads and get back a lampshade <laughs> jesus <Christ>. right <laughs> Yeah, oh. you really didn't like your ex. You just there you go, but not this particular oh, community. Up. So I think it's the other community. Remember the two that I said don't talk to the outside world. Yeah, I think yeah. Oh god, I'm gonna probably the people who tried to cross into their land. But I, I'm again. I'm. St- I mean, we're how many days have I been back in the states now? Uh, it's on my list to research. I'm really curious because they also had, which saddened me, a sloth head. Mm. I mean, sloths are such a nice creature. They're so cute. Yeah. Did you know it takes them like thirty days to digest a single piece of lettuce? I mean, they're a sloth. That, that makes sense to Can me. You imagine? It's a long time. <laughs> it's yeah. a long time. You ever see that video of the guy who saved the little sloth sloth from the road and yeah. then hands it to the mom and the mom like reaches back like I'll put that in the corner screen. So it takes like, a oh, year to like reach back and thank say thank you. you. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, how could you ever kill that little Right? Thing? So I was a little appalled. Yeah. By the I'm knowledge out, I'm of I'm out the, on the sloth thing. On the sloth thing. But yeah. I mean, this is a whole different 
a whole different world. So I realized, again, I'm not only dealing with nature, Mother Nature, I'm dealing with a whole tribe of badasses. So the, the Schwar, <laughs> though, has the four tribes. You said the one you were with was around 100 people. So yeah. let's just keep the math honest. Let's say the other ones are 100 to 200 people, whatever it is. Yeah. So these are just the an most ancient, this is the most ancient tribe of Ecuador. There's a very small community of it left. Within right. those four, two of them don't talk to the outside world, but they do talk to the other two, obviously. Yes. So it's not, they're not a pure uncontacted tribe. Like we know who they are. We know what they look like. Just don't fucking go near them. Just don't go near them. Right. Um, and again, they're marrying only within the tribe, but they're the, the, I think one of the driving factors, what I found out is the reason some of the, some of the reasons other than the fact that they're, you know, killing shrinking heads and shit, um, <laughs> they're just preserving their, their identity, um, uh, because is the, um, white man, as if you will, uh, came in and basically to the individuals who, the tribes that said, yeah, come on in, just, you know, like the ones we're dealing with. Yeah, come on in, you know, sleep on our land, teach us all your things. Well, it turned them Catholic and basically told them, now you got to now you got to be Catholic. So they got this Catholic church and I'm sure I'm going to get fried for this as well. But they got this church that's unused. There's no way it's being used. There's just dust everywhere. But that was a lot of the influence of the mm. outsiders coming in and basically telling them, well, you got to do this now. And so some of the things that has happened to a couple of the tribes in the past past. Yes, they passed from, it down. From white man, you know, yes. influence really kind of pushed, I think, these two over the edge and said, absolutely not. We are not having any contact. And the other problem is you, the, the youth that are being you know, born into the, the Schwar community and tribe are getting glimpses of the bigger cities and leaving they're not marrying within the tribe. They're not acknowledging their, they don't want to live like this anymore. Even though it's not horrible, they want to live in the big city. It's like someone from, you know, the the Bible Belt going into yeah. LA and they just never come back. They get lost in drugs. They they marry outside of the tribe. And so they are slowly but sure, surely dwindling in their numbers. And, and so they're, they're concerned. Yeah. yeah, well, they probably, in all honesty, like probably they, it will die off. But yeah. You know, Ecuador is on the farthest outskirt of the rainforest. Yeah. <laughs> the deeper you go, it's a big rainforest, people. It's a big rainforest. It's basically like they're L.A. And guess what? There is like a D Detroit's a bad example, but there yeah, is like a. a <laughs> sorry, Detroit's I mean, talking about shrunken heads and maybe, whatever. But, yeah. but the, you know, there's like a Kansas City in there too. You yeah. know, they, you gotta go real deep, and no one's ever seen the people in Kansas City. Like those are the true. We don't like the Brazilian government, for example, which I believe has the most real estate worth within their borders of the rainforest. Like mm -hmm. they have estimates of the number of people that could be in these tribes. They have yeah. no idea. Yeah. They have no and people that go there don't come back. Right. They kill them. They I don't know what the fuck they, they do. <laughs> but they to your point, yeah. yeah, they pass it down for centuries and centuries, things that have happened. And I listen. I don't blame them either. If you were, if people from another place came in there and did some of the things that, you know, conquistadors tried to do to some of these people, yeah. you'd pass that down too. Yeah. And they don't operate under a law system like we do. They got their own legal system. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's like, I want to have respect for that, if you know what I mean. But it's a wild thing that, like, even you could go 90 minutes off the beaten path. Just that oh, in Ecuador, yeah. and you're in this whole new world, and there's like, yeah, there's two people, there's two tribes over there. Don't fucking go near. Right, them. that's crazy. Yeah, and in and like I said, I this is just my initial introduction into one this tribe, two Ecuador. You know, I've I've gone to Argentina and different places, and there's nothing quite like what I experienced in the depths of the rainforest, and I'm not even scratching the surface yet. But I got to ask what I could. And I knew that I was building that trust because I fully plan on going back. And I want to spend more time with the Schwar because I am very, very curious yeah. about some of the things. One, I love their their conviction for their land and what they do. You know, though I may not be a, a meat eater, I completely agree with whatever is working for their ecosystem. They're they're you know, raising their animals or they're butchering their own animals. They're keeping it pretty, you know, sacred. And within the, there's no chemicals whatsoever used on that land at all. I love what they're doing. Uh, and I think that we could learn a lot from them, but also I, I just, I really want to know some of the underbelly because that's just me. Yeah. I want to know, like, how the hell are you going to keep this tribe going 
And and what are you going to expect when you are opening ecotourism to your land? What are you asking for? Pandora's Is box. this really what you want? Yeah. How can we tell your story without maybe inviting everybody in? So I, I'm, I, I've, I've got those questions. That's hard. That's really, I mean, that's, that's one of those things, especially today with the interconnectivity and how easy it is to get information out once you get a little bit of it. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, look at you right now. You were there a week ago. You're on a podcast right now being viewed in like 75 countries. It's, it's a you trip. Know, that's, and I'm, you know, imagine if you went on like a really big podcast, everyone would know about this. So yeah. it's, it's hard. Like I, I respect traditions a lot. Now I'm not gonna be the one to be like, yo, just join the real world. Like I, you know, I don't do that. But right. it, to your point, it's hard for the young kids to not, if they have access to the shiny object, to not want to go after that. Like, how do you be like, no, you're gonna stay here, and wear a couple rags. You know what I mean? And like hunt. It's oh, not, yeah. you know. And no disrespect to that. It's just. There's other things in the world. Right. And they're recognizing that. They see that. And I'm I'm really curious to understand what that conversation is like. Because when I met the young, young kids, they seem to love their culture. I mean, they came out, did a yeah. whole dance for us and ceremony and everything. And they, they love outsiders. They want them to come in and dance them and have a great time. But I would love to understand what is that conversation you're having with these youngsters when they do get a hold of this phone? And they have, they have Wi-Fi. I was also very shocked. They have what? Oh, Wi-Fi. We call we, we call call Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi and some of them. Is that a Florida thing? No, it's. <laughs> I learned it in Argentina, believe it okay. or not. Like All we right. got the Wi-Fi's and they're like, yeah, we got Wi-Fi's. <laughs> like, okay, cool. <laughs> so I, I remember saying that to Schwar and they all got excited. Like, you got yeah, the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi's. So, okay. so you know these kids have access to, the 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 social medias and all the things. I mean, they have a Facebook page for God's sakes. The I Schwar was shocked. Do. The Schwar have a Facebook page. They do. I think there's about 50 people following it. We got to get them on Twitter. We got <laughs> to get them on Twitter. Like... I need to see them tweeting out their thoughts. Like, just killed a few chickens cooking dinner. <laughs> I was shocked. I go, what do you mean they have a Facebook page? They're like, yeah, you got you to gotta like it so you get more likes. <laughs> Where are we? Why are we doing this? Had you ever really studied the Amazon before taking <laughs> no. this trip? And I, frankly, I... I'm I'm disappointed in myself, I think slightly, because yeah. for me, herbs are so important in my line of work, obviously with cellular detox and whatnot, that herbs are vital. Now, they're not getting all these herbs from the rainforest. There's certain ones that we do, but that's a whole different world out oh, there yeah. that I didn't even know about. I mean, he handed me this bromeliad and he goes, a what? It's a bromeliad. The you fuck know, is that? So they're pretty looking like, I think they're in the cactus family somewhere, but they're really vibrant and red. You see them about in the grocery stores, but in the rainforest, obviously we're talking massive. It's a kind of plant, right? I guess, yeah. Okay. So he picks off a piece and goes, chew on this. It'll help your kidneys. So I'm like, Fuck, yeah, <laughs> I'm just over here chewing on it. Yeah, tastes like a loved it. Yeah, it tastes like a banana pepper. It was a trip. And uh, but so there, there are those things and how important those are, but how much is out there that I didn't realize? And I'm, I'm fascinated now. And I did not think I would be that. Like, I've never been the tree hugger. I've never been the one that was like, let's go out there and make sure that we're not, mm. you know, polluting the rainforest. Never been that person. But after meeting the people, I think because that's where you really get me is when you see how much the people are affected by these practices. Yeah. That's where you'll get me. And now I'm like, oh, man, let's go plant some more. Let's go do some more. Let's go figure out how we can, you know, cacao coffee, two of my loves in my life. Cacao or, coffee? Cacao and coffee or chocolate and coffee. Oh, you know, wow. That took most, a minute to register in my head. Two of I'm the most acidic things you can put in your body, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I admit it. I, yeah. you know, I got my stuff. But it's so different there than it is commercialized here, obviously. But how important those two crops are to these communities. And I, I've owned a coffee roasting company before. I'm a fully trained roaster, barista, all the things back in the day. Coffee is a love, but to see how vital, like the lifeblood of coffee and chocolate is to this community, uh, not the Schwar, but the other communities within Ecuador, it's like, oh man, I, I, I think I might be spending a lot more time here just to understand how we keep these crops, these plants, these this whole mm. ecosystem going because cacao feeds all these other plants. It's right. not just for us to eat. Yeah, that, and that's the other thing about the Amazon that just blows my mind, the circle of life it is, you know, yeah. 
everything eats it itself. And they, like Paul puts it in, in perfect perspective when he would talk about how when something dies in the Amazon, it's disintegrated in a day. Yes. You know, because the, the plants, the, the animals, like there's no, there's really no technical top of the food chain in in the amazon it is all a giant circle and so it's like the it, it's it's really i mean if i want to put on a tinfoil hat like you know for a second that is where like if the aliens are somewhere they're in the middle of the fucking amazon oh. and like this is like yeah. it's it's this like i don't know man the whole el dorado thing all that i yeah. really think some of that has some sort of truth to it you know call me crazy fine but the, it's just such a extremely different place from the rest of the world. I I, I can't wait to go there. I'm, no, ju- I'm I, jealous oh, you got to go you, there. You got to go. You got to go. Yeah. And I, I'm definitely, for me, like I said, I, I really didn't expect Ecuador to steal a little bit of my heart, and it did. So I'm very, very excited to go back. Uh, to your point about the tinfoil hat, think about it, though. How I mean, ayahuasca and all those ceremonies are happening within the rainforest. If I'm an alien... That's where I'm going. Because you got all these fucking people who's just opened up their minds to different worlds. And you want control? That's the place you go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I never thought of it quite that way. But that's... I mean, that's where the veil is opening right there. That's pretty legit. I don't know. I, I'm yeah. thinking even more along the lines of the why are the uncontacted tribes in the middle? <laughs> we don't see them. We don't know who they are or know. where they are. Maybe, they're, maybe there's maybe... a few UFOs there. Maybe they're taking uh, credit for the shrunken heads, but it's actually the aliens. That could be. What if that was it? Aliens are abducted motherfuckers shrinking their heads there and dropping go. in the Amazon and having tribes go. run I around. I mean, this could is. be. Oh, my God. They're like, look what we did. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. It's, it's a trip. Yeah. So um, when are you going back? You know yet? Don't know yet. Okay. But I got the contacts and I'm, I'm going to be reaching out to them and seeing when. I would like to go during summer. Because their I'll summer th- or like summer, their summer. Okay, like Why I want to know what really hot and humid is to them. Huh. Because I'll tell you this, I think I live in one of the most gorgeous states in this country, and it's well, hot. it's a separate country. It's a separate. <laughs> I take a passport to Florida for a reason. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> you got America and then everything else. I'm right. Just kidding. Uh, so, you know, it's humid, and people say it's hot and humid there. But I got back from Ecuador and I was just pounding the juice and I couldn't believe it. I was like, man, I am I'm looking at my skin. I'm going, I am dry here. Pounding the juice? Yeah. Well, cause, what does that mean? Well, you don't pound water when you're dehydrated because water doesn't really hydrate. It's not its chemical nature. Well, I've been doing that wrong my whole yeah, life. Yeah, I know. Most people have. It's cool. Uh, I know. That was another thing is you got these people as we're planting. You're just sweating. You're repelling up and down these mountains. And they're going, drink your water. Drink your water. And I'm over here. And I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. They're like, L, if you don't drink your water, we're pulling you off this goddamn mountain and you're not going to plant anymore. You need to drink your water. And I yell down, like hanging on to this rope. I'm like, water doesn't hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> And you just see. How have you ever done a juice cleanse? God, you just, you just see their mind just, poof, you know, what? <laughs> I'm like having this conversation as I'm hanging on the side of the mountain. Water doesn't hydrate. It's not its chemical nature. That's not how it's designed. It's the universal solvent. I'm just going off my tangent, right? And I'm like, give me some OJ. Show me your eyes. Show me your eyes. <laughs> so, and they're tripping out. They're like, wait a minute. I said, if you actually want to hydrate the body at a cellular level, which is really what you need to do to not dry the hell out, is get some fruit juice. Look at what they're serving you here in Ecuador if you're thirsty. Horchata, which I found out. Horchata? Horchata. Is that like J-O-R? H-O-R. I mean, I'm sure they... They they, they (sighs) actually spell it with an H. It's kind of surprised. But yeah, Horchata... Where I come from in Southern California is a sweet, milky, cinnamony drink. But if you go to Ecuador and you ask for horchata, they bring you this bright pink. It's just this herbal aqua fresca, basically. Mm. So totally different. Did not expect that. But that's what they bring you to drink is fruit, herbs. That's what hydrates the body. Right Go up figure. Your alley. Right mm-hmm. up my alley. I was like, I'm home. This is fantastic. You said you were, you were what is it, repelling? Yeah. Rappling? Down mountains? I don't know. Is it repelling? I have no fucking idea. Do I look like I went mountain climbing recently? (laughs) First of all, I was not aware we were going to be doing that. We don't have mountains in New Jersey. but Uh, No, we don't have mountains in Florida either. (laughs) So there's mountains out there because you talk about the rainforest and everything, but then were you outside of it, I guess, too? Yes. 
Oh. So in the forest that, so Palo Santo likes hills. It actually likes incline mm. because it grows sideways. It's a trip. You actually have to point it in a certain direction when you plant it because it grows outward. How do you spell it? P-O-L-Y? P-A-L-O. Palo. Palo Santo. Fuck that up. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to Spanish now. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what I said so, out loud because yeah. I can't hear it in the in the thing. It fucks up my yeah, voice. Yeah, so it's a Palo Santo. So, okay. like, for example, you see. I'll the, put this in the corner yeah, of the screen yeah. for people. So, like this guy right there. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, they eventually grow sideways. So, you got to point them in the right direction. Now, mind you, eventually they, they intertwine with everything else because that's just how the rainforest is. But um, they want hills. They like incline. They like hills. Huh. So that's where we were planting, and that's where it likes to grow best. So that's where we were, and then we went deeper into the rainforest, and then it got flat. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I'm so jealous. That sounds awesome. Oh, it was so cool. I'm glad we took that tangent to start this whole Dude, thing it was off. Amazing. It was very, very. You cool. got to do it. You yeah. Gotta, I, I'm. I'm just figuring out like how do I get back there? I don't have to wait for another well, let's mission talk to trip. Paul. I just want to go back. Let's there. talk to Paul. No, I don't want to die. It's not a guarantee with him. <laughs> But, you know, he might take you to more safer places. <laughs> I mean, they're sitting here telling me not to drink the water because you could get sick. I'm thinking, do you, I'm sleeping with my white noise on because I don't want to hear what's getting eaten 15 right. feet away from me. He just sleeps right next to the Jaguar. Yeah, so no, you got to no. yeah, you gotta be careful with yeah, that. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, he could probably clean it up with, you know, if he had like a just, dignified person down there. Yeah, I just there. don't really. I, I, I can deal with a lot of things. You know, like people send me a picture of their worms and their shit and stuff like that. That's fine. Do not put me in front of creatures that I feel could eat me. Just don't do it. I'll talk to him about that. We'll, we'll see if we can, can we do something. Yeah. But yeah, I was to, I, I won't keep going on about his <laughs> shit. But I, I think he'd be really, really interested in be, what he does. That'd be cool. Oh, I did forget to ask this because you mentioned this real fast. Yes. I think early in this podcast. And I think you said something in the car. But you were learning about the gold miners yes. and stuff down there too. Yes. What did you hear about that? So, according to some of the so some of the drivers, obviously been driving around a long time. One of the gentlemen actually worked in one of the gold mines, and they said mm. it's just kind of, you know, you're young, you want money. It's a job. It's a job. So you go work, and I asked, well, who owns these mines? And he goes, mainly Canadians. Mm. I said, interesting. So the Canadians own most of these mines and they said yes so okay how many how many of these mines are actually functioning still to this day and they said only the ones that aren't poisoning the water and i said well i, I don't understand they said well mm, unfortunately they go and they dig away because gold is everywhere in those mountains which i was like all right party favors <laughs> and he's like you're fucking out there. <laughs> I mean, we're close. Like, can we just take a drive really quickly? Like, it's right there. We just uh, grab a little chunk and we're good. Call me a miner. Right? Just, oh, fantastic. And they said that so many times they just go haphazardly into them and they hit mercury and mercury just goes straight into the water. Because you just, you see how much, if, you'll you'll see it when you go there. But all these waterfalls. So there's just constant flow of water within the rainforest. It's beautiful. So it doesn't take much to poison the water if you strike incorrectly. Yeah. And they were hitting a lot of mercury. And so they said there's uh, two active ones, at least in the community we were driving through, which was this treacherous road uh, to the Elkeem uh, area. And they said there's only two there that were active. But I'm, of course, you know, as I can try to look through the trees as we're driving and just taking a look at it, it's very unassuming you would never know there's a mine there Did it's they, not like that elaborate movie that they've got all the you know cranes right, and everything no right. it doesn't look anything like that it's a building with maybe a ladder down there and maybe one more building and the rest you just can't see did they talk about the wild wild west nature of the miners themselves at all and no what they do when people sometimes cross them not all of them some of them <gasps> Well, so I asked, because again, I was asking very few questions before I was maybe getting into territory that I shouldn't. And I can only hold my own so far with Spanish before I got to grab someone to ask them to get involved and start, you know, uh, translating for me. I said, uh, for for mines just being out here in nowhere, I don't see a lot of security. <laughs> and one of the guys looked at me and I don't think he knew how to tell me. He's security. like, he's like... <laughs> He's like, 
you would never see it coming because you never know where the boundary is. Mm. I said, so you're telling me, you know, I'm thinking like an American where we've got the pick, you know, the, the, the barbed wire fencing mm -hmm. and that shows me, he goes, yeah, you'll find out when you've gone too far. Yeah. I was like, oh shit. They'll never see you again. They'll never see you again. No. So that was as far as I got and that was all I needed to know. Therefore, I didn't go mining. Good. I'm good. That's I'll good. just plant trees. Yeah, mining is, um, <laughs> tough guys do that one. That's all I'm going to say. And that's, listen, this is all secondhand stories right. I get. I don't even know for sure, like, yeah. exactly how bad it gets. But if the secondhand stories are even a preview, holy shit, man. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. It's crazy. But anyway, you've had a wild life besides your two weeks there. Yeah. In the Amazon. I just like <laughs> talking about it. But I was <sighs> down going on Anthony Pompliano's podcast in January. And I was spending the day in Miami with him, and he was like, "Ooh, I have another podcast coming in too." I'm like, "Oh, what is it?" He goes, I, "You know, I don't even know. This lady does <laughs> iridology, but it's interesting, so we're gonna learn about it." I'm like, "Okay." He's like, "Oh, you want to sit in for that?" I said, "Sure." So I got to sit in there. I, I don't think I've ever done that before. Like, sat in on a podcast. I do this, but like, I don't. You know, I'm sitting here doing it. I'm not like sitting there watching. And I was so entertained by the conversation you guys had because. Not only are you like extremely knowledgeable about, and I'll fuck up all the terms, but like the lymphatic system and general health when it comes to like acidity levels and things like that, which I care a lot about, especially right now looking at some of my own issues. But, you know, you have like this wild worldview too. And you were someone who spent a long time in the tech industry. I believe you were working, we could talk about it, but you were working with as a contractor for the department of defense at one point is that so, the proper uh, way to say it yeah basically okay. i was a liaison okay. between the big tech and yeah well actually why don't we'll we call it that. Why, why, don't, yeah. why don't we start there why don't we start before you got to like yeah. iridology because people yeah. are like iridology what the fuck is that yeah. we'll get there it's very very interesting but before <laughs> you got there and and focused on everything you're doing now how did you like what did you do out in Silicon Valley, what was what was your job role? Where'd you start? So uh, I first started off just I think any peon in the in the big tech world as a, an assistant. I worked with a startup company who created a software that it was on Excel as a base. It was horrible. I would go in on Saturdays to help break it, mm. all right, just to test it. But it tracked uh, pretty much every dollar that went in and out of uh, California school systems or schools when it came to their construction. So hmm. as we know, California is extremely particular about all their reporting for taxes and dollars, especially education. <laughs> Say that to be kind. <laughs> and they are uh, they want everything in what they call a crystal report. I mean, this mm. was, mind you, this was way back when, so I'm sure it's something totally different now. Now it's in the cloud somewhere and doing some AI. But I first started there. And I knew right off the bat after college, I'm like, I want to make money and I know tech is going to be it. I was that kid that was constantly troubleshooting computers in the class for my teacher in fourth grade. Mm. I had never, I didn't have, I had the old school Mac, you know, dinosaur back in the day. And I just was fascinated by technology. And so I knew that one, I wanted to make money. I played golf in college, which was a blast. Oh, you did? Yeah. I played competitive golf, which is sure. great. However, I was like, well, I could go make money doing this, but I have to be really good at school. And I hate school. I hated mm. it. I was that C student, just in that meaty curve of mediocre. I feel right? like you were the person that just didn't like sitting down in the classroom I hated with it. the structure. No, I wanted to make right? friends with everybody. Every single one of my reports was, Elle just continues to talk too much. She makes friends with every single person I try to move her next to right. to stop right. talking. No, yeah. Yeah, because like, you, like, you're very, very smart. Yeah, it's joke's not, on you, that's, teacher. That's not the issue. <laughs> so, I like, so I couldn't stand school. So I really loved golf. And I loved the aspect of, you know, competitive uh, collegiate sports, but I couldn't stand school. I mean, I was falling asleep inside math class, which I wasn't really already inclined to math anyways. Numbers are hard. And so getting me up and having me practice early in the morning, I'm falling asleep in class. And so I just said, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm smart enough. I'm, inter I'm interested enough in tech and I like sales because I like people. And I like talking a lot. Mm. So I'm going to go into tech sales. This will be fantastic. <laughs> and I moved up very quickly. 
I mean, mm. I did not, I'll admit, I did not finish college because I just couldn't wait to make money. I couldn't wait to get out in front of people and do this thing. So right off the bat, I'm working in this startup. I left the startup, started working for a software company, which was not a household name at the time. It was a backup Commvault, uh, mm. which now is household. You're welcome, everybody, for all those cold calls. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> so, you know, uh, headquartered, you know, in Jersey and such. And so I... I started there and kept moving up just as sales, inside sales, then I went into territory sales. And I was doing really well for as young as I was. So I made my first, I think, six figures at 24 years old. Oh, wow. I'm a single gal, no big deal. I mean, I was in a relationship at the time, but not married, not kids. I was just like, man, I You're balling. Just, I'm balling. I can continue making money and having fun. Took a step back from that. Cause I really wanted to help people. And that's just how I was raised to continue giving back and giving back. And I just thought I'm just packing my bank account. I'm not helping anybody. I'm having a great time, but I went a little extreme and that's how I knew to do things is basically like I'd clean slate and go start something new. I always burn shit down and go start something. That was just my nature in the past. And so I quit. And left my relationship, left a great paying job that I was up for a promotion. How old are you at this point? I was 20, uh, going on 26. Okay. So I am, I was like on trajectory and the VP is like, you're doing what? <laughs> you're leaving what? And at the time, um, I, I don't think I've ever even said this to her, but so the, the gal that I was dating at the time, I was up to be promoted to replace her, but he, he hadn't told her that yet. I, of course, did not know. Oh, you were shitting where you eat, too. No. So here's the thing. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Know? Let's back this up for a second. <laughs> so um, when we got together, I was I was not. I mean, I was still at the startup. I mean, I wasn't looking to get into the company, but like, why not? You know, it was a great company at the time. She was working there. So I got into the company, and this was not even a, an, an issue. I thought you dated cops. This that is was not later. a cop. Okay. All right. So you got in the cops that was later. later. Okay. Oh, yeah. Got it. I was still working on the, you know, the light, you know, right. just kind of business suit, casual. Yeah, you know, business suit, right. casual. Right. And then I went into like the dark cops type right. of thing. So I had my okay. phases. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, and uh, that kind of scared me a little bit. I think that that was also like, no, no, no. I, I, even though we're not together, like I respect this person. I'm kind of glad I'm leaving because even though I wanted that position, I didn't want her position. I didn't want to put her yeah, out of work. Sure. I mean, she'd been doing this way longer. I mean, she was 16 years older than me. So I oh, also liked him. Little, I also liked him a little older. I guess that. Yeah. Okay. So there's that. Uh, so also that wouldn't have gone over well. Hey, babe, I'm 16 years younger than you and I'm taking your job. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been in this industry for three years. Like, it wasn't going to go well. So I I just, like I said, I clean slate. Uh, and I and I said, I just want to travel. And I want to help people. And so I became a flight attendant. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not where, where people would see that one. No. I want to travel and help people. Let right? me go work for American like, Airlines. Let me just go be a flight attendant. Which, you know, frankly, I don't know who I helped, but... It was it was fantastic and fun. How um, long were you a flight attendant? One year, because okay. they get paid shit. Yeah. Oh, I, money's I, not the same. And and thing was, is money was never like a big thing for me until it was, mm. till it was not there anymore. And I was like, oh, I'm working twice as hard. Yeah. At being a flight attendant for a fraction, uh, I mean, maybe thirty k, maybe. Yeah, and I'm making six feet. Okay, so it's a it hard was, job. Too. It was hard uh, dealing with all kinds of personalities all the time. I mean, I loved that part though. I'm crazy. I, I love <laughs> people. Like, tell me all your s crazy stories, and I loved it. I I felt like every single time I had a hundred to hundred fifty people locked in a tube in the middle of the air, and they were mine for hours. I loved well, it. Well, that sounds like the beginning of a horror movie. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. This, this is how horror movies start. <laughs> yeah. I loved people and I still do. Um, it just, it really came down to the stress, the stress and the money. They weren't equally now. It sure. wasn't worth it. And so I of course left and that's when I started with HP, which was still HP at the time. Oh, like the HP. The HP. Yeah. Um, prior to them separating, becoming HPE and HP Inc. Right. Um, so I worked with, uh, I worked in San Diego and uh, the islands, Hawaiian islands. And that's where I really got into, though I was still doing commercial like uh, sales, 
I was working somehow, got into DOD conversations. Yeah, what were you selling at that point? What were you selling? So servers, storage, networking, they were just starting to get into their cloud a little bit, but it sucked mm. um, because it was new. All right. Okay. Um, this is what, like 2014, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, t like end of 2013 is when Got I it. started with them. And um, it was fantastic. Absolutely loved it. It was great. But that's when I started to get into that public sector type conversation and really selling like millions upon dollars of, of servers to the DOD and, and the Fed space, which I wasn't even a Fed rep. It just so happened that I worked on the island and not a ton of people understood the culture. Well, I'd spent so much time there already and i had i just ease it you know san diego five hour trip pop, 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 back and forth oh so you were hold on a minute you were selling were you, maybe i'm really no, mixing a lot of things up right now okay. but isn't this where like the nsa and snowden was yes yeah, right yeah. so you okay yeah so you were work there's some things there yeah Interesting. Yeah. Which I, of course, had no idea. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go sell millions of dollars of servers and it's DOD and it's on the island. Sign me up. Like, Did that end up is... on the Guardian? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All I know is that when I'm done selling it, my hands are clean. <laughs> so, yeah, it, 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 was, <sighs> it was a trip. You know, I absolutely loved it. And I swore to myself I would never work in the public sector. I always wanted to sell to the big companies. I was selling to <laughs> Herbalife. I actually, no, I can't say that one. We're gonna, I'll, bleep, I'll bleep that we'll out. We'll bleep that I, out. I just bleeped but that out. No, it's cool. It's There were some things that Herbalife, you know, when they went down with some of their stuff. With Are the, you allowed to say that name? Yeah, totally. No, again? you're good. Herbalife's okay. good. It's, okay, the other one I won't. I'll bleep it's, that It's uh, some of the things that happened when Herbalife got shut down by some of the things. And you right. watch some individuals get carried out in handcuffs as you're supposed to go meet with yes. them to sell stuff. I've seen some wild things. And I swore I would never go to the public sector side until I started working with Amazon. Amazon Web Services. And that's so you moved from HP to Amazon. With a couple of gaps in there because again, like I said, I did some I did some burn down things. So I was at I think I'm one of those people that leave while you're on top type of thing. Hmm. I don't know, there's something about that. Like this is the best I've ever done in my life. Let's leave it. That's you're an me. adventure seeker in <laughs> I, a way. A little bit. You Not an like adrenaline to, junkie, but just an adventure but seeker. But you like to like I, this is not the right word to use, but it's on the right parallel. You like to like torture yourself to have to build something new. Yeah, I, okay. I, I'm a startup mindset. Right. I love right. startups. And so a lot of my roles were roles that were never invented or, or created before. And so I love going in and fashioning that role, making it to what it is, then leaving it and letting <laughs> someone taking it to the next level, right? And not taking your girlfriend's job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that part. Um <laughs> Oh, she's a fantastic job. Uh, but it's so I had taken breaks here and there. That's when I did more humanitarian work, you know, uh, going to Nepal, rebuilding homes. I had stepped into some of the iridology as far as doing that with clients, but it was my give back at the time. I was really starting to break into the how do I juggle these things? How do I be the corporate saleswoman and you know, total badass in the boardroom, but then helping humanity on this side. So I was really leaning into a lot of that humanitarian give back to the world effort at the time. I just, again, couldn't leave it totally because what, of the money. What was, what was the culture like though? And again, people keep hearing this word iridology. We are going to get to it. Yeah, I, I we promise will. you. But what, <laughs> what was the culture like? Because people, you know, Everything these days is fucking zero or a hundred with, with, especially politically in everything. Yeah. And people have their stereotypes of all these industries. And of course, you know, the stereotypes with tech. Yeah. I'm talking to someone who has a 1776 tattoo on, is it that wrist right there? <laughs> there it is right there. So I'm, oh, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> I got my ohm on the other side just to balance it out. Your what? That's an ohm symbol. The fuck is an ohm it, symbol? It, uh, gosh, I'm going to uh, just give it high level. It's basically a hindu symbol huh. of uh it's a u m it's the vibration of pretty much all there is you are a series of contradictions anyway this is so true. <laughs> <laughs> both hands right there right anyway there. <laughs> so you're working in sales is is the sales level of it a little different of course it's different culturally but is it are there different attitudes and different more diverse personalities i should say in sales rather than in say like engineering in tech? Huge. Okay. Yeah. 
And I, I think it's like anything. You have your red personalities or your your just very driven individuals who don't want details. You just put right. them in the let them run, right? right. Um, and obviously far more social than than the engineering side. Now you get some hybrids here and there. There are some individuals that uh, what I call one man shows. They can be the only person in a room, architect out the solution, but also sell it. And those are rare individuals. Uh, and there are some out there and they're fantastic. But I will say there's very different personality and the culture depends on the company, right? Mm. Uh, I will say that out of any of the companies I worked with, Amazon focuses on culture. Amazon, yes. Absolutely. And I will say they've done a pretty damn good job. Depending on what department though, right? Because yes. like the, I mean, the lower level on the ground stuff, we hear some horror stories about that. Yeah. So, uh, and, and sometimes it's, it's very different to say why well, I worked for Amazon because most people think Amazon, the retail side, the dot com side, right? But, but when web, I, yeah, which is right. This yeah. is, which is a whole different beast. Yes. And again, that's where you're getting the IDP in a bottle, you know, to, exactly. you know I, I totally understand. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't have visibility into that. I'll tell you something here in a second, though. That's a trip. I've never actually told anybody this. You were all AWS, right? I was all AWS, Got which it. is the money-making side of Amazon, right? Which people don't think about. But people that don't is, think about. So when I tell people is. I work for AWS, unless you're in the tech world, you have no idea what I'm saying. Or maybe you watch a lot of NFL, and then you're like, oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Commercially, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I say, well, Amazon's tech company, still don't know. How about cloud? Mm, I didn't know they had a cloud. So there's still a lot of this mysticism around AWS for the majority of society. They don't know Amazon's way deep in data and cloud and AI and all the other things. Mm, don't even touch AI. the Alexa part of this whole thing. I won't ever have one in my house, by the way. Up. Bookmark that. We'll come back to that. Yeah. Continue yeah. though. No Alexa's in the house. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but it's the the culture, going back to your question, it is very focused on there. And I loved it. I loved the culture at Amazon or AWS, if you will. Um, I, I, I felt I got most of my growth in my career at Amazon, at AWS. Mm. Um, and AWS was the only role I've ever had that was 100% public sector. I didn't work with any private companies at all and it was a trip because i swore i'd never do it because i didn't want any of the bureaucracy i didn't want the contracts the bids the rfps the you name it i'm just constant shit that the government has to go through to spend a dollar how dirty is that world <sighs> there is there is an underbelly to it that i feel most people people and i only scratched the surface of it i mean just like all of us we think that maybe we know the depth of some of the things the government does the information we're given is still so surface level i mean there's conversations and handshaking that's happening beyond anything i ever got to see but some of the conversations i was involved in especially during the pandemic were the challenging ones for me. This is where I really had to balance the two sides of myself is I'm hearing conversations that go against me as a patriot and mm. our freedoms, but yet I understand their driving yes. motive for it. Their intention is to help. Their intention is to yes. do good and, and really benefit society. But I think we're actually damaging it. Yes. And so there were times where I'd get off the, the calls and I'd, I'd immediately go take a shower. I was just like, I feel fucking dirty. I so, feel wrong. And I feel like a hypocrite because I'm a patriot. I know that there's some <laughs> things like you can't go into details right. on some things because that's obviously confidential towards business. But yeah. on a generalized level, are we talking about, say, some privacy concerns with what we allow governments to have access to pretty much? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And no questions asked, just going to take it. Yeah. Now, how do you put from your end? Now, it's not like you're the CEO, so but you're a high level employee there. So you're reporting to people who make final decisions and have that. How much of that even from what you could see from their seats, like, you know, the Bezos type seat or whatever, or the C-level type seat, how much of that 
did you feel like was a you're going to do this or we're shutting you down versus, hey, we want to do the work with you. And if you don't do this, we're going to do the work with someone else. But best of luck to you. Meaning like no threat. You, oh, you see I what I'm see saying? what you're saying. Um, and just to be clear, are we talking about how we're speaking to the agencies, the government agencies sure. that we're working with? Yeah, I meant it gen just general there government wasn't a lot. in general. I, I will say this. There's those conversations I believe are happening. They're at a very high, high level mm. beyond those of us who are, of course, what they would consider peons. We're just out there architecting solutions. But I was one of those individuals that I wanted to get involved in what was being built. Like whether it was at, you know, the state level of California, which that's where some of my scariest conversations I was having um, and scared me as a, at the time, a California resident. Um, and then there were things that were happening at like the sheriff level, things that we were creating to help further safety, public safety and justice. And there was no strong arming. There's high encouragement. I wouldn't say I saw any of the kickbacks. High encouragement. I'm sorry, that just that just hit the top yeah. level for me. Yeah. Okay. There's high encouragement, high encouragement. To, to, to use this. And but I, I never saw any super dirty play. But I will say that that comes down to the culture. The people Amazon hires, at least what I experienced, are some of the most high character of individuals. I really really felt like I was surrounded by a good group of people who meant well. Whether they realized what they were building yes. is different. Yes. Now, on that note, though, like you buried the lead with the Alexa thing there. Yeah. Why, why don't you have an Alexa in your house? Because they are listening to everything. Everything. How is this discussed internally? Like, are they, is there ever like a moment of silence where it's like, oh, shit. Or is it just like, oh, yeah, we're just getting data so that people, we know everything people are doing? The intention is to help. The intention is to benefit society, right? The benefit to make sure that if we overhear an argument happening inside a home that we call the cops for them. Oh, no. Wait so a there's minute. a little minority reportish type of thing there. But again, remember when I said this is the intention to do good. The intention to help society, but the problem is, is we break privacy. Now, yeah. I'm one of the individuals that I've been in abusive relationships before in the past. I'm that stupid idiot that kept going through the door and volunteering myself to this situation. So I understand what it's like to be in that, but would I have wanted someone to call the cops for me or to yeah. intervene? No. Well, actually, let me play devil's advocate, though. Even if you did, this is where the bigger Constitution picture comes into me. And trust me, they, you know, there's mistakes made in the Constitution. That's why we have amendments, and there's things you can look at for sure. But when it comes to some of the core tenets, the right to privacy, the right to free speech, the, the, the right to uh, untied media to be able to report on things, yeah. things like this. Even when things go haywire in some ways and we start to question it, that's like the test of questioning it because it's like, well, you got to look at the biggest picture. I know there's a big picture that bothers you, but what's the biggest picture of all? And when I start hearing things like a machine can start to determine where an argument's going too far. Mm. Well, whether it's the machine or the person listening. Now, how many, people, how many pe people do they have listening? Because there's a I, billion, there's eight billion people in the world. I honestly couldn't tell you. I really, but I will say this. My, if I put that tinfoil hat on. Yeah. What's one of the portions of Amazon that went completely down and they fired everybody? That's the Alexa area. I don't. Wait, wait what? I don't know so, anything about uh, that. So, unfortunately, things didn't go exactly. Now, we're not told. I don't think the full story of why a lot of the part, the, uh, the Alexa portion of the company was not doing as greatly. I, I'm kind of, in my opinion, think that might be a little bit of karma because I just, yeah, it's, if you look, I think a lot, so internally a lot of 10,000 employees in November, 
2022. It was a massive layoff. Alexa and Cloud Gaming worst hit. Okay. We're just yeah. pulling up the report while For you're talking sure. here. For sure, yeah. Okay. So, and I will say this, Bezos was never a fan, from what I understand, of firing. This was, this was this unprecedented. Was yeah. Not to say this is a fault, you know, I, I, I come from, everyone's creating their own reality and you attract what you, everything to yourself, bad or good, depending on how you want to define it. So I do feel for some of my, you know, f f you know, Amazonians is what you call them. But this was unprecedented for Amazon to lay off this many people, especially in those sectors, because these are two areas that are actually supposedly growing. Gaming is huge. Look at everything that's coming out, metaverse, you know, crypto, all the gaming that pays. How is it that we're not succeeding in the gaming realm? How is it we're not succeeding in the AI Alexa realm? I think just maybe a little karma. But but don't you, th that's fine for this one company, cool. Mm. But is it different or do you not know about this? Because I don't know, I just kind of assume it's the same. Is, is it any different at Google? Yeah, I have no idea. I'll tell you this, I do have a Google in my house. Because you don't know. Because I don't know. And that's, See, I'll bet. And I, I know, I guarantee you, everything is being recorded. I'm sure everything there. I don't. But then again, I take this thing around with me. Right. That's I'm the being problem. Tracked you everywhere. Can't get away from and it. I'm not. That's why I'm saying this. I just wouldn't. Because especially at the time, I was working for the company. And I didn't. I will say I was not going to have an Alexa in my house. And. I would not, uh, you know, we obviously do uh, uh, bring your own device, right? BYOD. Uh, so I preferred iPhones, but I would not backend my phones into their their MDM. Into their what? The, uh, it's called MDM. It's their, it's basically uh, almost like their, uh, not their API, the VPN, so that I could get my emails from the company email and I could do all that with my own device. I would not allow that, VPN connection to my personal device because I just don't trust the guys on the back end of this and they're mm. only human that's not to say it's a company driven thing it could just be some guy in the back that just wants to look through my photos I'm not about it so I'm just one of those individuals that doesn't like to have a lot of access to yeah. my stuff but again here I am with a, a Google in the house not really my choice um my ex got me hooked on it because it does the white noise at night. It's really the only reason I have it. It's a horrible reason to have an AI device in my house is so I can play white noise at decibels. Yeah. Yeah, I know. This is why nothing is ever 100%. It's just, I just, when I found out about the Alexa stuff and I was, you know, uh, working with the company, again, I absolutely love the community I worked with. I love Amazon. I love what they provided for me, what I got to do, the people I felt I was helping. Um, there's an underbelly to it. And there yeah. were times where, like I said, I had some conflicts. And I think the way you paint some of it, I think is actually really fair because I, I get shit for this when I point this out to people who are really concerned about the privacy, righteously so. But I'm like, you know, I'm not so sure that all the people have bad intentions. Right. And I think a lot of them actually probably don't. Are there some that do who who just aren't thinking about things or they're scumbags? Yes. But I think a lot of people are exactly what you said. They're trying to do what's best for people. But like what's the quote? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. I think that's probably what this is. A guy that I find myself going so back and forth on though is Bezos of all these executives because – he seems to be a series of contradictions, too. I really took a step back when, no pun intended, when he took a step back and left. Because I'm like, wait a minute. This is not on brand. Like, he gave up the CEO role. He's out there fucking lifting and shit, banging very hot girlfriend. Like, living the life. You know, kind of like balling out at this While point. While his ex-wife is donating all of her all money, money. Right. As fast as possible. Good for both of them. Yep. You know, because like... Point being, he took his hand <laughs> off the trigger yeah. right when, if you were going to put on the tinfoil hat and go full conspiracy, right when you would think, well, he would be putting it firmly on there. 
And I'm like, well, wait a minute. You know, this is the same guy who buys the Washington Post, which is a conflict of interest, in my opinion, the front page. You know, it, that's the problem with a lot of these publications like New York Times, Washington Post. The front page stuff is where, like, the news whores go. Right. Like, the people who are just trying to get on the front page. That's yeah. all the shitty journalism. Yeah. And then everyone else. <laughs> like my friend, All the good shit's in the fifth, fourth page. <laughs> my friend Joby Warwick is at the Washington Post, and he's fucking amazing, you right. know? But he's not a guy whoring himself for the front page every time, mm -hmm. you know? So anyway, but still, people see the front page, they see the headlines, we can all laugh at some of the headlines we see at these publications online. And I see a guy like that buying that, and then he's buying it when the front page of those places is also pushing more and more lockdowns as this went on with the pandemic, which profits him at Amazon. So I'm, I'm starting to think of the time, like, oh, this Bezos guy, oh my God, he's, he's evil. And then he quits. And he's also like... Elon Musk has never really liked him, and he's been a competitor, but he's, like, kind of being nice to Elon publicly now, too. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's all these little things that are happening, and I'm like, huh. I wonder if, if a guy like that who has the ultimate keys to the kingdom has seen some of those things that even go beyond what what he'd be okay with with good intentions and is saying, oh, wait a minute, maybe – Maybe the ninety nine percent of the population who's concerned about this stuff has a point. What, what do you like? What do you think? I mean, it's I, I feel it's both, right? I feel he does have good intentions. I was bummed to see that he stepped back. Really, I think the man is is a genius in his own right. However. I think he has his hands in as what people, I don't know, the term, what they call oligarchy. He's part of that whole yeah. crew, right? Yeah. I think eventually you get too big and you have to step back. Like When you say have to, what do you like mean? Like Mark Zuckerberg, the guy should have bailed a minute ago because he should have been the last person on the freaking stand. Right, but when it came to Facebook. But like, Are you implying, I want to make sure I understood this right, are you implying that there's like, some bigger thing that tells you, oh, time for you to step down, Jeff? That is my okay. tinfoil hat moment. Okay. I do think that he's too involved in certain things, and he had to. It was, if you don't, we're all going under with you. Mm. Whether or not we're able to cover that up or whatever that is, or maybe it's not as big as now some of the things we're learning about, who's to say? But talk about a 180 in all of the things in his life, as you said. And so I wonder if it's just like, okay, now you're free. Though he's still on the board. He's still helping yeah, make no, decisions, no, he's, yes, right? Yes. Like, he's not gone. He's not gone, yeah. gone. But what's fascinating to me is the rumors, and though they could just be rumors, of him coming back. After Are there rumors of that? There, that? I mean, I think like a month or so ago, there were rumors that he would come back and take the helm again. And I'm thinking that's got to be a rumor. I don't know about you, but... If I'm living his life, I'm not coming back to He the, looks checked out, I, man. I'm not coming back to this shit show. So I'm when I saw that, I thought, I, I don't know how you would just walk away from your baby like this. You're at the top. Maybe you're one of those individuals like me, Lee, when you're at top. Okay, great. But I I just I don't know. But what if? Let's just put on our tinfoil hat for what if. What if we knew about this pandemic was going to happen? We knew all the big, t at least some of the the big tech, the big three, we'll call it, maybe big four, but big three. Who uh, would your three be? Well, you got Google, uh -huh. you got Facebook. Uh -huh. I mean, you throw a Twitter there, but Twitter's a shit show. Um, but you have Facebook, Google, excuse me, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, and uh, Amazon. What about Apple? Yes. Maybe I'm just too big. In love with Apple still and want to believe that they've got good intentions. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what you're saying now. Got it. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure. I'm sure as well. But when you think, when you look at who benefited the most during this mm. pandemic, we were busier than we'd ever been in, I think, any time in AWS than in the pandemic. To be clear, when did you officially leave? Like what year? Uh, I left in July last year. So like eight months ago, yeah. nine months ago. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And like I said, I, I have nothing bad to say. Absolutely love them. I love the teams, love the, the company, at least how I perceived it. But if you just take my direct experience out of it, there are things that I could kind of 
look side eyed at and go, wow, so we made a shit ton of money during the pandemic. Everyone's holed up in their houses. Can't go anywhere. We're benefiting. I mean, you just saw our stock go absolutely crazy. And I thought to myself, I don't know how I feel about benefiting from a tragedy such as this, yeah. but that money is kept within the few. This isn't like this amount of wealth is being sprinkled around. Every, no, we're working tw three times as hard. The higher ups are getting paid boatloads. We get, you know, some of our stock, right? But ultimately, this was a lot, a lot of profit made during this time. And just the timing of the pandemic and the profit and the stock going up and Bezos happened to just take his his break. And then you probably know that the pandemic has its expiration date because people are going to call bullshit eventually. Right, right. Right. And companies are going to get really sick and tired of being put under their thumb and saying you can't do anything. And eventually they're going to let up and eventually science is going to prove that you know, some of the things weren't exactly as they told us was Fauci, all those other things. Yeah. And now we have to lay, we hired a ton of people for the pandemic and then had to lay off massive amounts. You look at the state of Amazon now and I just think, what? You lost all of that profit. You lost all the profit. Is that karma? Maybe. Or was this all part of the plan? Because... Bezos was never a fan of firing people, so they say. Mm. But then nothing against nothing against Jassy. Then he fired people, yeah. But then there's all these people who are scared to death. You fired not mm. only Alexa and the gaming, two areas where, frankly, cloud is cloud's cloud. We've done it a million times at this point, you know, which I can't believe I'm saying. Like I was back in the day where you're still doing like you know, mainframe and servers and shit. Now we're talking, yeah. cloud's like, oh, cloud. Dime a dozen at this point. But the two areas I feel really are things that are up and coming, especially as we get into more of this metaverse area. And they, you cut off two of those areas and fired a bunch of acqui uh, talent acquisition managers. So no more hiring. So What? You're saying it's a giant contradiction. It, 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 that's, that's what it looks like to me. But what does that mean? Like, that's what I'm not um, really sure of. Like, does that mean there's some sort of like, they're just icing out one company? They. they big yeah, quotes, right? right. Or, uh, I don't know. This, this is where I get so stressed at night. Like, <laughs> and I can't, can't control any of it. I don't fucking know what happens. You can't let it keep you up at night, man. I tell you, this is where I just eventually, you know, because I, I had to look at it like, again. If I truly believe that everyone is creating their own reality and attracting everything to them, then this is just part of the cycle. I think that, yes, Amazon gave a good service. Some of these big tech gave a good service during the pandemic. But ultimately, we've we profited off unfortunate times. Some of the most unfortunate times we've seen in our history. And that's just the balance. Nature is like that. Yeah, no, it's that happens. Creates, destroys, creates, destroys, always a cycle. And in order to recreate itself again, and maybe this is just their burn down. Maybe this is just the way they recreate themselves in, in a new age. Who knows? It's unfortunate for a lot of people, but those people are okay. They'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, you when you start talking about the the plan of it all, right? I think that beyond what we don't know and can just speculate on, I think that especially at tech companies, they have simulations of everything. So they're and you would know that better than most of us. I mean, they're prepared for how to capitalize at scale on black swan events you know because it's not like previous titans of industry in the 60s and 70s and shit where it's like oh oil or some right. some not that those places aren't right. around they are with tech they click one button shift one thing boom we're in this world now it's not a physical product you know so for them to be able to say do well with something like the pandemic i mean 
I could fill in five other blanks of things that could have had, you know, some catastrophic similar effect where they would have done well too. Yeah. You know, so them being prepared, it's almost like they were prepared by their existence and their innovation. And so where that gets confusing is then you look at, well, the people and the intentionality of it. Yeah. And that goes, it's a similar (laughs) wavelength to what we were talking about. I think a lot of people probably have good intentions. Obviously, I got a little weirded out when like, you know, they're calling for endless lockdowns and you have the the owner of fucking Amazon owning the company asking for that in the Washington Post. So stuff like that, you know, that'll get my attention. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting to hear you say like, yeah, it sucks to be able to say you profit off something like this. And you're right about that. And that's a good humane thing for you to say too. But it's not just tech. I mean, me, I'm, I'm still trying to make it out of my parents' house here, but like we grew <laughs> off zero on this thing and we grew in the pandemic. And if the pandemic hadn't happened, this never would have. Exactly. And there's a lot of other people across a lot of industries like me and it's kind of zero or a hundred. You either, the pandemic was a good thing for you business-wise or it was a bad thing. It's not like, well, it was good and bad. It's like, no, no, no. This either fucked you or made you. Yeah. I think that's just the reality of like, you know, unexplainable Darwinism in some things. And you know? I and I don't I'm not bashing it at all. Yeah. I mean, you look at what's gonna what's gonna happen to the real estate market here soon. I mean, there's just the cycles of it. I mean, what's you, gonna happen to the well, real estate market? I mean, soon? everyone's who can time the market, right? <laughs> I feel like you just sold off like four but, assets before you but, came here. <laughs> it's just one. <laughs> so <laughs> that's also in California, but that was a good decision either yeah. way. Yeah, you're getting two bucks for it. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just like, again, this is just how nature does things. But I agree that the pandemic opened up a lot of opportunities. Even if that opportunity looked like a shitty situation. I mean, how many people decided, you know what, screw this. I'm going to quit this dead end job and go create my own business. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You might have struggled a little bit. Yeah. But it created opportunities. So going back to the real estate comment is we see what's happening with the financial markets right now. Not not great. Not great. Doesn't look promising, right? Yeah. Great for crypto. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah. Maybe, maybe not, Aspects right? Aspects of it. Yeah. Aspects of it. So now we're in this, now we've, uh, we've just got through the whole pandemic thing, which is now getting debunked by every which way, you know, the, the shots the and the, the and stuff. origins yeah, yeah. and all the things. So now, you know, dealing with that. And now we have banks failing. And, and and now truths coming out about why that fails. Who knows, right? But inflation, taxes, Fed Reserve, all the things that are happening, look, the value of cash, most likely going to go down, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to stress the average individual. And it's going to create a lot of opportunity for investors, especially in the real estate market. Now, do I look at those people badly? No, I'm actually one of those individuals that those who are prepared yes. for certain times of struggle can benefit. Nothing wrong with that. There's the, if you knew it was going to fail and you purposefully positioned yourself in a place of influence to direct that to maybe be a little harsher of an event to then benefit your company, that might be a little bit of an issue. That's yes. where I have that problem yes. is did you help make this situation worse, worse than, yep. so that you could profit? Now that's a karma I don't get involved in because karma keeps receipts. Yeah. So I'm all about oper- you know, preparedness and opportunity. When those two meet, fantastic. But if your intention was to continue harm on a class of people just so you could benefit, which we see all over the world in different areas, you know, yeah, that's that's something I don't like to be around. Yeah. I don't like that. Like, I, I'm not one of those people. Well, proof's in the pudding. You left. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, yeah, it was time. And I'm glad I did because it, it got me to really step foot 100% into what I I really, truly love doing. And that's helping people with their health and a gateway to people to talk about other things, whether that's physical or non-physical issues. So. All right, let's go there. Let's let's, let's let's, let's talk about what you're doing. So, like I said, I was sitting in on that podcast with Pomp and literally like five minutes before you get there, I'm like, so what does she do? And he goes, 
bro, I have no idea. It's called iridology. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is that? He's like, you look at eyes and you tell people's health. I don't know. It's like 50-50. I've talked to doctors who are like, yes. I've talked to doctors who are like, quackery. Yeah. I guess we're going to find out. So then we get in there and you guys just had this wild podcast. But to start off, before we break down like some of the many things about the full system that you're aware of that everyone can understand because it's medical, actual medical fact. Before we get there, the the specific thing you do with iridology, can you just explain exactly how it works so sure. people understand? Sure. So the entire nervous system in the body communicates, obviously, to the brain, but specifically to the eyes. And so the colored part of your eye or the iris is the only soft tissue that exists to this day soft tissue analysis, excuse me. And you can take a close up picture of the eye and pretty much tell 80% of your health. So how? Well, given the entire nervous system communicates to the eye and I just, this is kind of where I feel like this is beyond some of our knowledge as far as how, mm. why it was created this way. But there has to be a way to look into the body instead of being invasive. And mm. this is where I just think creation made it super easy for us is how do we take a look at the body without having to cut into it? And that's where the eyes come in. I can tell, and through iridology, you can tell structure, you know, whether that's the muscular, bones, lymphatic system, nervous system, digestion, skin, everything. What is the lymphatic system? For so the lymphatic out there? system is in short term your sewer system. Okay. So you eat and you excrete. Well, so do your cells, every single one of them, depending on what you're feeding them. Right. So if you feed the body something that it doesn't necessarily digest very well or process very well, know what to do with, it needs to excrete it. Also, cells live and die. That's just natural part of life you know very much we're very much like a plant yeah and so if those dead cells have nowhere to go cellular waste or dead cells and they're not out of the body and they just stay in the body then that's a problem right so mm -hmm. the lymphatic system is responsible for the the um kind of the the, the absorption utilization and then uh, elimination of all of that intake that you put in your body. Okay. So. so back to the front end of the eyes though. Mm. You first of all, how did you get into this again? Like when Yeah, this so was a while I was ago, right? I was introduced to this when I was a kid. So my mom was riddled with just health stuff and not massive major chronic things, but like constant headaches, eczema, severe eczema up to mm. her elbows. Uh constant pains, mood swings, all things. And, and she couldn't find answers. She'd gone to every doctor, every, everything she could find. And no one could give her relief. And we're talking where I was a kid and she'd go to the Cairo know, a few times a week. And the Cairo had to teach me how to digest my mom because there were days, obviously, that the Cairo wasn't working and my mom would be in pain. So I would adjust her mm. and give her relief. So this is just kind of my experience with my mom and it was hard to watch. Well, one day she just goes into this little herb shop in Tustin, California, and this little older lady comes over and my mom's telling her her, her ailments and she says, well, get in the back, I'm going to read your eyes. My well, mom's like, okay, <laughs> what do you got in the back? Like, what's going on? <laughs> and she gives my mom an iridology exam or a, a analysis and just reads her mail to her like my mom didn't have to tell her any of the origins or what had happened that she got into a massive car accident hit her head on the windshield she didn't have to tell her any of those things here's this older lady just going yep you got this 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 take these herbs do this and and you'll be fine and my mom did exactly what she said some of the ailments you know went away some things we detoxed a little later on down the road but my mom was fascinated by this. She goes, okay, you mean to tell me that I can look in someone's eyes and find out everything I need to know about their health minus, let's just say the blood. Because the blood's 20% of the health equation, whereas lymphatic is 80, mm. okay? So that's when people say you're 80% water, you're 80% lymphatic fluid, not water. Interesting. Yeah, okay. so, which is is a big deal. And, and so she just went on this you know, down the rabbit hole with iridology. And so when I grew up, I, I found these 
books by Dr. Bernard Jensen. And I thought it was fascinating because I'm just a nerd like she is. And so I started flipping through the books. And when I saw the pictures of eyes, and I'm, I don't know, 12, I don't know, 11 or 12, it was hard to look at them because I could almost feel like the eyes look like the person was in pain. Well, they were. I didn't know this. I hadn't read the book fully. And so I said, well, I'm a really squeamish kid. I'm just going to put these books away. For you. <laughs> and 20 years later, you know, my dad gets really ill. Same thing. Can't figure out what the heck's wrong with him. Take him to every allopathic doctor, herbal doctor. All They can't find any solutions for this man. And we're almost losing him. Like, it's scary to us at this point. I mean, the man can't even look out his own eyes. He's so swollen everywhere. And in pain, can't sleep. And I, I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way. There has to be an answer for this. And that's when I was introduced to Dr. Robert Morse out of uh, Port Charlotte, Florida. Mm. He's one of the only individuals to work with Dr. Bernard Jensen. And Dr. Bernard Jensen is who's basically responsible for uh, pioneering iridology into the States, into the modern consciousness, if you will. And it's and yeah. there, there's a lot of people like it's it's mixed. There's people who think this is totally fake and people who think this is totally real. But when you start off, like you mentioned the story about your mom and the woman was able to read it through her iris and everything. Like how do you – what specifics – can you give examples of like things that the eye will show that sure. then translate to a specific ailment? Yeah. So for example, I, this is one of my favorites is when I know nothing about someone's health and – they're like, okay, read my eyes. And this often happens, and I don't like to do this now, but this often happens when, you know, you're sitting at a bar or at brunch mm. and someone challenges you and like, oh yeah, look at my eye. And, and I look at their eye and I'm like, well, what's up with your left knee? And their eyes just get big as dollars. Like, holy shit, how'd you know? My <laughs> knee's been bothering me for years and I can't figure it out. I'm like, yeah. They it's like act, some psychic shit. They act shocked. And I'm like, this is, this is not shocking. It's science, yeah. but we don't teach this, right? Blood tests are cool. I nerd out on them a little bit, but they are nothing compared to what the eyes will tell you. And so I could, all I can say is there is way too much freaking proof that this is accurate and works every single time because I've done it enough and I've read people's eyes from all over the world without knowing a single thing about their life. And I'll tell them every single day what they're eating, not maybe how many eggs they're eating. If I can tell you they're eating eggs, I can tell you you're eating meat, I can tell you're eating this, I can tell you you've got uh, this organ suffering, I can tell you you've probably got some back problems, or you got digestion, it's sluggish here, maybe it's a little painful on this side, descending colon, like I'm, it's a, that pinpointed accurate. And I get emails that are just paragraphs and paragraphs. Oh my God, how did you know? Here's what's been going on, this, 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 this. Now with proper chemistry and physics and knowledge of that and how the body works you can always map those back down to the root cause most people are just feeling the symptoms right most people are just experiencing eczema or aches in their knee they don't have any idea how that came about so how does that there, there's a good example eczema because you've talked about i've heard you say it i know you said it on the podcast with pomp yeah. and we were talking about earlier the skin is the third kidney yes. or something like that mm -hmm. because if it's not going to be excreted through the kidney, it's going to be excreted somewhere. I'm sorry, real fast. Yeah. Can, your phone, can you put that, this is really random, can you put that in your pocket or something? I'm going to just put it on the ground. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And then see this mug? Yeah. Can you move that to that yeah. other one right there oh, on off camera? I don't know why, but it caught the cameras. See your color now? If we're looking at your screen, the I camera. I can barely see me, but as long as it, yeah. The camera was picking up. Something happens sometimes when it puts this mug into focus yeah. or like something white and then the camera turns yellow so if i have someone listening out there who understands camera focal coloration gonna, or something like, please explain have, this because why it does drives, she have jaundice no. it drives me fucking nuts i will be sitting here focused on a podcast but listening to someone while watching their screen over here is i'm like why the fuck is their color doing that yeah. but now your color looks great fantastic so, anyway back there we'll see so how long that lasts now it works but with with the skin i was saying the skin being the third kidney thing yes. right yep so if you're looking at something like eczema for example mm. which is something that i struggle with 
what about your diet? Because a lot of what you talk about with iridology comes back to things you're doing in your diet. And to be clear, you're not someone who's like, oh, go vegan or something yeah. like that. You are you have very customized things for people. But what about your diet can you immediately kind of glean and be like, oh, it's one of these types of three things, for example, that yeah. you are – that you're doing that, that's causing that with eczema? Sure. Usually it's going to come down to the – biggest antagonizers is meat and that's uh like flesh we call it protein and i'll break that down here in a second okay. but meat fish i call it flesh <laughs> uh, and uh dairies major and uh i'd say the other one is probably just i, I mean alcohol could be one of those it's highly highly inflammatory highly acidic but really it's Anything that's on the acid scale. And when I say acid scale, I'm not talking like a lemon because people are like, well, lemons are too acidic. No, no, no. We're talking how foods break down inside the body. That's how we measure them when it comes to the lymphatic system. Pretty much mm. anywhere in chemistry, biochemistry, you always measure how it breaks down into the body. And so I usually can tell if someone's eating a high mucus forming diet, you could have someone eating no meat and a ton of rice and still end up with eczema because rice is heavily mucus forming. What, what kind of rice? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I eat more rice, more brown rice than know. anyone you've ever seen in yeah. your life. The, the thing about rice, it's, um, so I tell people that if you have anything that you could kind of, if you cook it and you could pack it into a form, if it's gooey, if it sticks together, that's going to happen inside the body. It's going to create an obstruction. The body doesn't like obstruction. How does that form mucus? Because it's how it breaks down in the body. So even uh, you can look at something outside of the body, but unless you understand how the human body works and what we're supposed to eat, which is not really what anybody else is eating at the time, yeah. um, that's what determines where you are in that pH level, right? So we as humans are a species. We don't do blood types. That's You don't change diets based on blood types. I get there's a lot of theories out there. Most everything out there, if you flip open your Instagram or your Facebook, everything that's told you diet, this supplement, yada, yada, this herb, yada, it doesn't fucking matter. Two sides of chemistry. There's acid and then there's base side. Not too far to alkaline, because remember, nature doesn't like extremes anywhere. Um, so closer to the alkaline pH level in the body is prime. Well, how do you get there? Well, you first understand that as a human, we have short, pocketed intestines. We have a certain structure of our teeth and what we can eat. And if you get into exactly what uh, and how we break things down with all those systems, whether it's digestion, lymphatic, nervous system, mainly focusing on kidneys, adrenals, and those the endocrine system, you'll find out every single day that we are meant to eat more on the frugivore side. Fruits, berries, melons. Frugivore. Yep. Fruits, berries, melons, some seeds, some nuts. But notice how there's no dairy, there's no flesh, and there's no heavy starches. Beans also fall into the protein area. We don't digest beans very well. And a lot of vegetables we don't digest very well either because we don't have four stomachs like the herbivores do. Mm. So you look at like a cow, you look at a horse, look at how long their digestions are because they have four stomachs to deal with the long cellulose and the long uh, fiber strings chemistry in there so we don't have that so because we only have one and we don't break down a lot of those foods well it reacts because all the acid is supposed to be in one part of our body the stomach but then it spreads correct so now you go pour in something that requires a high acidic process to break it down like you get these people out there who are like yeah i'm gonna eat meat for energy and, and building muscle i just laugh i'm like because that doesn't make sense in science chemistry would laugh at you that's not how that works. The second you go pour in that high acidic forming chemistry, the body has to do overboard of mm. acids. So now you got the stomach chamber, which is the only acid chamber in the body, right? So you got that breaking it down, but it's mucus forming. When it breaks down, it's like sludge. You have two waste systems. You've got the undigested food, which is just your stool going through the 
the, right. the large intestine, sorry, large, small intestine. And then you have the lymphatic system and the, the uh, sewer, the waste going out the kidneys, out the urine. Hopefully you've got some dusty, cloudy urine. Right. If you don't, you're dying. And You're dying. You're dying. If you are not taking the trash out, you're dying. Because you're mm. just backing up that sewer system. And the longer you keep those acids in there, the longer you're breaking down tissues. I see it every day in eyes. These, these tissues that are just suppressed by all this mucus and all this lymphatic waste, it's just suppressing them. It's just tearing these tissues apart. It's just setting them on fire. And so now you start to see all the other issues, right? Um, which we can go into, but, but basically when it comes down to the diet, you have, you, I want people to understand that we really should be eating things that are made for us and the way our body sure. works. So let's just say, going back to the eczema question. So you pour in a bunch of this acid forming food, it doesn't break down very well. You can't really utilize hardly any of it, especially flesh. Um, and what does the body do with it? If it doesn't break it down fully, if it can't use a lot of it, it does one of two things. Hopefully some of that waste or that mucus, lymphatic you know, congestion goes out through the kidneys and through your urine. But for the majority of people, there it's just storing because when when you say I, I'm sorry, yeah. I want to make sure I follow this. When you say that though, and you're talking about forming mucus, I keep picturing the mucus forming in your stomach, like because that's where the process is going. And then I guess it works its way up. But mm -hmm. you're talking mm -hmm. about it forms up here. It can form, yeah. It, well, from your stomach. Yes. Yeah, so if you take draw a line from your stomach all the way to your head, what do you have? The entire GI tract right. up here, right? So this so is it's a, basically gas forms it's, it's and then just it creates the, mucus. Right, because the waste has to go somewhere. It's trying to go through all the lymph, lymph nodes. So people who are taking lymph nodes out, fucking stop. Right. Those are your garbage men. Those are the guys picking up the trash and taking it to hopefully the dump. But so it's going to do its best to have all the lymph nodes take on a load of this waste. And you have them throughout your entire body. But if they're already clogged, they can't take on any more trash. Now you got a problem. Now you're just overloaded in the lymph nodes. Your garbage men are done, can't take any more. And your kidneys, which we are genetically weak in our kidneys and adrenals at this point in our civilization. We just keep passing down these issues. And so it's rare I see someone with like the soldiers for kidneys. And you're adrenals. saying like evolutionarily. Yeah. We just keep passing these issues down. We don't ever fix them. We don't strengthen. That's one of my things is, gosh, I mean, if you want to have a baby, do you want to create a life? I, I'm inspired to help moms take a look at their end dads, right? Depending on how they're having their kid, uh, really take a look at their genetic weaknesses already before they're passing them down to their children. Because now we just continue to do this. And yes, you can tell genetic weaknesses in the eyes. How? So again, this is all the nervous system okay. that's communicating, right? Um, nobody comes in with a clean slate. When we're babies, if you're breastfed by your mom, you are getting her lymphatic system immediately. So you have a lot of people say, well, yeah, I was born with blue eyes, but suddenly they turn brown. Why? Mm. Let's look at mom's eyes. I love when I get a chance to do family's eyes because I can see the issues just get passed down. You see the drug the chemical deposits get passed down. You see the genetic dispositions grow within the genes. Are you saying their genes almost get edited when that happens because they're so young? Or did I that totally no, go No, genes are genes. The they're in there. That's the what I thought. Lymphatic system. You'll take on. But why were you saying that you can ha you can talk to people before they're going to be parents to... Yeah, I don't know if yeah, this was yeah. the exact phrase you used, but like edit their genes yeah. or something. So you would have to go pretty deep, pretty deep to fix some genetic issues. And they would have to be pretty young in the gene pool within the, you know, the length that they've been in the genealogy to fix. I'm not looking to fix genes per se, because I don't think anybody's that dedicated to just, I mean, they would have to go full board fruitarian for the rest of their right. life, right? I'm not asking for someone to do that because we're here to enjoy and experience and try all the flavors right. and things, right? What I want, what I would love for moms and dads to do, or however combination that is, is to give their child a better leg up. Okay, so for example, I was given a 
not her fault, but my mom was a highly dehydrated. She didn't know any of this stuff. She was living on Advil and Tylenol because she was mm. in so much pain, right? Yeah. Steroid creams, loved drinking tea, eating popcorn, lots of sulfur in her body. And so I come in with, you know, what I, I either have really light, light brown eyes or I have blue underneath all this shit in here because there's only two colors of eyes, blue and brown, and the, everything else is just lymphatic system. So right? how do people get green eyes? They're full of shit. Go back to go back to primary colors. What makes green? Blue, blue and, and yellow. Uh, I was blue. gonna say blue and brown. Blow your nose sometime and tell you what color that is. It probably looks like the shit on t that's covering up those blue eyes. So it happens all the time. When I'm looking into green eyes, that person has a problem. Has blue eyes and they're full of lymphatic waste. What the fuck? Yeah. Same with you see somebody with like the orange spots in their eyes or dark no. spots in their eyes. <laughs> no. You don't see those? Never seen that. Now, if you see red eyes, run. Now, now we got a different problem. That's, that's an alien, that, but okay. Or a vampire. I'm pretty sure or those might exist somewhere. Could be one or the yeah. other. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll go in Ecuador and see if there's any in the rainforest. But there's, there's, that's kind of just the, the, the basis knowledge of some of the iridology you find out. But when you look at parents, I'd love for them to just give their kids a leg up. I came in, like I said, with sulfur and all this other shit, but I also came in with a parathyroid weakness and a pituitary weakness. I'm five foot nothing. I have teeth that are horrible. I grow hair wonderfully. I've got all the other things, but for some reason my teeth aren't great. So if you- What's wrong with your teeth? Oh, I know they look probably okay, but they're not my favorite, but they're super duper- um, they're like, for example, I had cavities on my first set of teeth. And I'm like, mm. wait a minute, I have perfect hygiene. I'm not pounding down sodas. My mom, my parents, not allow that. I'm flossing, I'm brushing, but why is it I've got cavities in my first round of teeth, and in my second round, forget about it, and teeth pain and all the things. And and as I studied this stuff, I find out I have a parathyroid weakness. Parathyroids deal with mm. calcium utilization. Mm. But if I look at my eyes, I clearly have a spot in my parathyroid spot. I clearly have an uh, issue in my pituitary, which is all growth factor. I'm short, didn't develop as well, and I was riddled with growing pains. You know, just, just aches and pains as you're growing because the pituitary deals with all the growth factors. What if your husband's really short? Maybe he's a fan of that. I got nothing against short men. I got nothing against short people. But what if you didn't want to pass that down to your child? Maybe they wanted to be a little taller. Maybe you could give them a little bit of a better leg up on that mm. and get to understand your genetic weakness so that when the kid cops out, if mama, you're too acidic, then maybe we don't have you pass your lymphatic system down to the baby. Maybe you don't breastfeed. Maybe, uh. maybe you give your child a little bit of a better chance and i know there's a lot of mamas out there who are like fuck that i need to breastfeed my child because there's hormones and there's this no no two sides of chemistry do yourself a favor that baby's got beautiful clear eyes leave them alone give them a different not formulas because now we got the other problem baby formulas but what's the problem with that no uh, they're mucus forming they're mainly you know whey based or soy based and they're they're, uh, the formulas we see out in the market today are pretty, pretty. Sounds like a lot of things are mucus forming. Almost everything is. And you really got to make choices. And so I tell people, this is, this is all a choose your own adventure. You can go eat cheese all the time. You can eat your heavy starches. If you're combining certain foods, this is another thing. If you're combining a starch with a flesh or a protein, you're canceling out digestion. I know. I call it flesh. It's just easier. I'm, it's I'm easier. laughing because I, this is exactly what I do. It's what everybody does. Go to any restaurant and tell me that there's not a starch and a protein mixed together. Everything we eat in this country and pretty much in society is. That's what gives me pause, though, because even when you look at, like, people talk about, like, old cultures with more natural food and whatever, they do that, too. Uh-huh. You know, like we put all kinds of shit in our food too. God, do right? we ever? <laughs> but <a> like, <laughs> if I go to Italy, they got a starch and a meat. They, in fact, they have them as separate courses. You get both of them, yep. right? Yep. You know, if I go to, if I go to China, I get rice and I get you know chicken. Like it, it, it's not, it's the same shit. And yet, a lot of places don't seem to have 
maybe not even specifically the mucus thing, but are problems that we do. Yeah. So is is a bigger effect the kinds that, you know, you hear people talk about like the seed oils and shit like that. Like, <laughs> is that even bigger? And this is just something where you're getting really granular for people who are maybe more sensitive to it, like me, obviously. So that's a great question. I There's a few answers to that. There's always the relationship with the food. I think I talked about this a little bit before is I, there are cultures out there who eat whatever the hell they want and they mm. seemingly are perfectly fine. Blue zone and certain things, but look at their attitude. Look at the vibration that they have in their life. Look at their intentionality, the way they believe about that food. There is a relationship they have with that food that though, if we, probably looked at their eyes yeah they probably have issues but they're not experiencing anything to this day like you know eczema headaches whatever it may be this is what you and pomp were talking about this he brought up warren buffett the yeah. guy's like 90 years old and drinks coke and eats yep. ice cream every day and he's great and you said it's probably has and this doesn't make a lot of sense when you hear him talk about it it's his relationship with yes. it he's never thought about like I am putting shit into my body. Oh my God. So there's like yeah. the mental reinforcement there. I think he has you're no to resistance. Yes. He has absolutely. What is he invested in? What companies are he, is he invested in? Coca Cola. And is he McDonald's is one of them as well? I think so. Okay. What yeah. is he? That man is eating part of his legacy. Can you think about the pride? <laughs> like, God, like, think about this shit. That man is eating. So you're saying he's created and God, what an amazing feeling. You're saying I got to go to McDonald's uh, and order no. a burger and Coke and be like, but I'm going <laughs> to invest in fucking stock. And you know what? Now it's my legacy. So no. I can do this every day. <laughs> because here's, here's the unfortunate part. It's easier for me to get someone to eat a fruititarian lifestyle than it is fruititarian. I than love that. to change their perception around things. Mm, I believe that. Unfortunately, and this is coming from a girl who grew up in Orange County, California, where if you're not 100 pounds wet, you are fat. We are already in the society raised with a bad relationship with food. Everything's going to kill you. Everything's going to do this to you. So, right? There's all of the, the mental and the ego and the opinions. And again, you can't even open Facebook and Instagram without someone telling you that that's going to kill you or this is going to make you well or this is the right way to do things. We're so riddled with all of that. I find that the people who have zero resistance and aren't listening to all this going on mm. are probably perfectly fine to eat that stuff. So I'm not going to tell them that they shouldn't or they can't. Where I do give some of my advice and I part and I, I, give this information are to people who are perhaps looking to either relieve themselves of certain symptoms are staring in the face of chronic illness and want to feel better or are looking at okay maybe maybe what I've been doing hasn't been working maybe I want longevity and maybe that looks different and maybe that looks like this whole lymphatic system, pH level thing. I only come from the detox standpoint because other the detox than- detox standpoint? Yeah, like cleaning the body up, repairing issues, cellular regeneration because cells regenerate, tissues regenerate. I come from that standpoint. Other than that, go have a blast. All right, so someone walks in. Let's say they are a power lifter. So they're eating all kinds of dead animals, yeah. right? Yeah. Let's say they have a severe mucus problem and let's say they've had, let's say they've been doing this heavily where they have these problems and they've been powerlifting heavily for like five years. Mm -hmm. So it's not been like two days. Yep. How do you fix them? Well, I first tell them that they need to prepare to get really skinny because we have to detox them. And the best way to do that is to rid their body of the acids because the acids are the only side of chemistry causing inflammation, pain, breakdown, yada, yada, right? Yeah, my body's swimming with them, clearly. Eh, eh, almost everybody is. But when I get bodybuilders, and we do, we usually tell them, prepare to get really skinny. Because unfortunately, you built your muscles on, I say, you built it on sand. You built a house on sand. 
Mm. Those muscles are only as good as long as you continue to pump the steroids, the norepinephrines, the epinephrines, the adrenaline of that dead animal into your, you're basically shooting steroids. People, guys, like, I don't do roids. Are you, do you eat meat? Then you do. But you just think you're doing the right thing for a bodybuilder because that's what they keep telling you. So unfortunately, when we, we detox them, they get really thin, which is hard for ego. Very. These guys freak out. I'm going to lose my muscle. Yeah, but look at the gorilla. Do you want to be as strong as that motherfucker? Because I would, if I were you, where he's chewing. The gorilla? Yeah, look at a gorilla. He's built all of his muscle, the uh, gorilla, like, like an, an actual, actual gorilla, yeah. has built his muscles on straight amino acids. Can you explain that sure. to people? So most people, when they say protein, they are trying to go for the amino acids, which is the nitrogen side of chemistry or what builds structure. And so unfortunately now we've kind of told people, if you want to build muscle, you got to go eat meat because they think that that's the amino acid right. heavy side of chemistry. Right. Unfortunately, that's the, when you look at protein from a chemical standpoint, that is the complex structure of amino acids. The body doesn't like complex. It likes simplistic chemistry because mm. it's easier to break down and it's easier to use. So I tell people, well, why wouldn't you just look at the example of the gorilla and eat straight amino acids that your body recognizes and can use and is not an acidic process? And now you wouldn't even have to worry so much about pumping iron every day. How often do you see that gorilla pumping iron, yet he's still built? Well, they're also in nature. I mean, like, There's some differences. Yeah, yeah. But the longevity of that muscle mass will outdo any individual who builds their muscle on animal protein any day. Even pea be, protein is the same way. Same thing. Super and to acidic. be clear, you're someone who comes at this. I think you already said this, but I want to reiterate this. Number one, you look at each individual person differently because they have a different set of problems that they're mm -hmm. facing. It's, this is not like a one size. Here's what you're going to do. One size fits all. And number two, you're not someone who's like, oh, go be a vegan or be a vegetarian. You're saying you're focusing on, well, for one end of it, your relationship with food. Right. That's one part yeah. of it. But then you're more focusing on if people are going way too hard at something pulling back on that lever big time. And yeah. sometimes it, for this example, I asked yeah. you to lay out, this is one where at the beginning, you need to pull back totally to kind of shock the system to detox. Yeah. That's essentially. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so you, you mentioned something, well, everyone's going to be different. To a degree, everyone is experiencing something different. But again, we're a species. The main systems of the body have to be repaired, cleansed, strengthened in order for us to have the systems work properly. So we're always going to go after the digestion, the kidneys, the adrenals, the nervous system, right? We're always going to go after those components on every single person because usually rule of thumb is if you're filled with, you know, let's just say lymphatic congestion, mucus, whatever, your diet is one thing. But then we have to look at the functionality of those organs and the systems. So let's just say you can be a fruititarian, but you don't ever filter out your kidneys. That's a problem. So changing well, your how diet- would that happen? Because because just eating fruit doesn't necessarily equal that you're going to pop your kidneys open and they're going to start mm. filtering out. Everyone is at a different state in how well functioning those systems are. You get some people where digestion's completely down. You get some people with just one kidney. How do you, how do we work on someone with just one kidney? That's a mm. lot harder. So we're going to address the system as it's created because it's created the same for every single person, unless, like I said, you are missing a kidney or it got taken out or you've, you know, had bypass, yada, yada. There's, there's the same system in every single person because of being a species. However, there's going to be the different states depending on where you've been lymphatically and so forth. 
and genetics do kind of take a factor in that as well. Well, what you're getting at too, like we keep talking about the kidneys, but obviously like we have a whole, as you've laid out a little bit, we have a whole digestive tract that happens. And I think at least a mistake I make when I'm thinking about this, and I'm sure a lot of people do, is we constantly focus on like the stomach. You know, how does it feel? Because that's what processes the food when you get in. But then you have a whole system of intestines. Yeah. You have a whole, you know, there's two different ways you can get rid of shit here. You can either take a shit or you can piss, right? So there's two very, very different ways that that we excrete different substances, I guess. Correct. But yeah. another problem that I've heard you speak about is that a lot of people in that second part of the process after the breakdown – regardless of how well or not well that went. I assume it, in this case it wouldn't have gone well. But they hold on to waste for a very long time. And people will sometimes, this really scared me when you when you said this with pomp, people will have waste in their body sometimes in certain situations, people who may look very healthy on the outside, that has been there for years. Meaning there are, sm- even if it's not big, there's small parts that are sitting in their intestines or something that are basically like, I liken it in my mind to like a fungus in that way. And they're just sitting there and it's a foreign substance that's not supposed to be there, that has no nutritional value, that then I assume causes all kinds of reverberating effects in the bloodstream at all times. Is that fair to say? Yes. And it's not only causing those issues, but for example, uh, to your point that that's been acidifying in there for years and it causes this like tar that just sticks inside the pockets of our intestines because we have pocketed intestines and therefore you block all those channels that the intestines and so that whole digestion its purpose is to take in nutrients break it down then to absorb it, then to send it out for utilization. But the problem is, is let's just say the majority of people, which because of the diets, because of the combination of foods that cancel out digestion, you have individuals that have what this is like a tar that blocks that those pockets from taking in anything and then utilizing it. So you keep pouring in chemistry. So you keep eating. But it's not really going anywhere other than through the stool or hopefully you're filtering out the cellular waste through and the acids through the kidneys. But you're pouring in like supplements and vitamins and all these different, you know, new fan dangled pre-workout thing. And you're having a really expensive pee because you're not absorbing any of that, maybe 10%, maybe. Why aren't you absorbing Because it? you have a malabsorption because that all that acidified shit we were talking about that's just basically blocked the wall. These, com- these companies have no idea. These people who make more supplements and more supplements and more things and more protein powders and all this kind of stuff and people are out there just pounding these away and going, why am I not feeling anything? Because you're not actually absorbing and utilizing any of it. You're just peeing it out. And so then, but that means you're not, if you're not absorbing it and utilizing it, you're not necessarily building muscle at the same clip or something like that. So I've asked one of my clients the other day, I said, how long has it taken you to build what you have? He goes, years. Yeah. I said, that is unfortunate. I took a look at his eye. He's got a malabsorption ring pretty damn thick. You can see that. You can. I said, that's what you got to fix first, dude. Get in there. Clean that up. It's not going to be that enjoyable. Do you have a picture of what that looks like? I do, yeah, yeah. Can you give me one of those sure that I'll can. put in the corner of the screen yeah. for people to look at right now? Yeah, and so again, you can go look in the in the mirror, take a little light, point it there, take a look at it, and you'll see. And this is why I tell people, you can keep pounding the ground and, and your head against a wall, trying to figure out why am I not putting on muscle? Why am I, you know, not some guys out there who can't even put on weight? these really thin individuals, which I don't, I think lean dudes, that's totally fine. Again, this is choose your own adventure. You may just be a cyclist lean type of dude. Great. But what if you're one of those individuals who really wants to put on weight and he's like, I can't. Or a gal, he sees very, very thin women who are like, I can't put on any weight. Take a look at their malabsorption. Take a look at the other areas of their, their body, clean them up a little bit. Tell them, take a break. Is that where, little silo on that, yeah. is that where some some people who have suffered from anorexia in the past then can't put, like, actually, you know, uh, 
I don't know if this is the right term, but like get past that and then they're able to eat and have a good relationship, but they still find they're brutally skinny and can't put on weight. Is that because their body has basically utilized awful foods in the past just to try to get some nutrients that then causes that malabsorption? Yeah, uh, okay. most likely there's going to have someone with a malabsorption ring in there. Also, yeah. too, you got to look at the toxic factory or the chemical factory of the body, the liver and the gallbladder. Um, oftentimes because of the constant Bile need, your, your, you know, anorexia, bulimia, stuff like that. Right. Too much acids that form in the body and it burns up the stomach. And so therefore you just chew through your food. So you find actually a lot of anorexics and bulimics have diarrhea issues because they just have a chemical imbalance in the, in the stomach chamber. And you can see that also. You can see if someone has a high acidic stomach or a low acidic stomach. So not enough. You can see that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, and so I just tell people, I'm like, it, look, and and guys are like I said, some of these individuals that are really nervous about losing this muscle. I'm like, you're don't let your ego get in the way. Your ego's very attached to this muscle. I get it. You look great, <laughs> but you're full of shit, man, and you're killing yourself <laughs> trying to put more muscle on. Like, you know, it, it's there's no shame in taking that step back, clearing the foundation. And then building the house better, building it for longer. And because if not, unfortunately, here's where we get to. You keep pounding that animal protein. You keep pounding these, you know, those, those the neurologically damaging foods. Don't even talk about just the acidity side of things. Neuro, yeah, neurologically yeah, damaging. Again, How remember, so? you're, when that animal gets killed, it puts out all of its last chance to live. Norepinephrine, epinephrine, uh, adrenaline, it gives out all of it. Because it's trying to live, it's trying to defend itself, but it's being oh, killed. Yeah. So it's the ultimate stress level that the animal goes through. You that goes into the flesh, that goes into the tissues that you're eating. So a Holy lot of people shit. are like, "Oh, I get energy from meat." No, you absolutely don't. You're living off the steroids. You're living off that animal's last chance at defending itself. And that's, I know nothing about this, but no. that doesn't give you energy if it has like adrenaline. I would think an adrenaline. Sure. Like I'm just my, but my but go idiot take roids, brain's then. thinking that. Go take roids. Same thing. Mm. But it's neurologically damaging. But that has to, roids have to, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them have to do with water retention, right? Those, that's just the kidneys. Okay. Kidneys are what cause water retention. That might have been a not. really dumb thing to no, say. No, it's okay. But, okay. No, as, again, this isn't taught. I never did roids. So this really isn't know. taught. None of this is taught, unfortunately. Why? But why? Because the best way to control an individual is to feed them shit. Mm. So feed you're... them something that will break down their willpower. Give them something that will break down their processing power. So neuro, go after them everywhere. Energy, neurologics, all of it. Mm. Control through food is the best way. That's what. Anyway. What, what do you think of our? I would say of our food pyramid, but I think that's already been largely like people have looked at Let's that and said that shit. we fucked that shit up. Actually, can you can you debunk that for people who aren't aware of this? And I'll pull up, I'll put up a picture of I guess the yeah, food that pyramid whole, that existed. That whole thing is is but ridiculous. What is, what is like the what what I guess like the government has put out as like health data that is completely ass backwards with respect to the food pyramid? All of it. Almost all of it. Okay. Now, I'll give you an example. Doctors can't stand me because I absolutely <laughs> school them on chemistry. You have a diabetic. Whether you're a, a diabetic 2 or a 1. Okay? 2s are just blood sugar metabolism issues. 1s when we're actually now we need insulin. Right? You got a lot of individuals out there putting diabetics and telling them don't eat fruit only eat vegetables now that doesn't make any sense chemistry wise because what's a diabetic dealing with sugar metabolism so a little bit of adrenal weakness that's where it starts that's it but you first tell them not to eat any fruit which is what would actually heal them which actually clean up the body more stringent chemistry and it'll electrify the nervous system, adrenals, help them beef up to deal with the sugar metabolism. Now we got them to a type one. Cool. Now we got them on insulin. 
And let's really make sure they only eat what? Veggies and protein. Why would you do that? Vegetables and protein beg the pancreas for insulin. Why wouldn't you give the pancreas a break? Why wouldn't you give Mm. it one thing that doesn't require insulin to get to the cell wall, which is fruit? So this is where we just got way off chemistry. We got way off the way nature works. We don't know how, we're not taught the way the body works, but what did, what did you just do? You created a customer for life. Yeah, because they have to rely. Mm. They got to keep shooting up the insulin. And this just, I, I, again, they're not taught this, so I don't blame them. They are doing exactly what they were taught to do. They're afraid to put a diabetic on fruit. Well, what if they swing too high? I'm okay. Well, they'll, you can slow that down a little bit. How do you respond to it? Because it's just a natural question. You're, I'm sure you get all the time. Yeah. But how do you respond to the idea of like, oh, so you know more than doctors do? I didn't see you go to medical school mm-hmm. or things like that. Because to me, what you're talking about, you're not talking about sitting there and cutting people open or dealing with exactly diagnosing like, let's say, instantly life and death type situations, you're talking about general patterns that you do diagnose in this way as far as like seeing patterns and how people eat like a nutritionist. I I would look at it that way, which is different than a doctor. And so I think that's fair. But like, how do you respond to the people who are like, you're not doing something like you're sitting here calling out the medical professionals, so to speak, as someone who's not? Those are two different sciences. Mm. medicine and proper chemistry and physics are two different things. This is, I, I, I don't have to have a medical degree because what I know and what I advise on is not medics. It's the way the body is built. It's the way the body science. functions, science. So I tell people, you can, you can see, I, and I will absolutely, I love working with doctors. I piss him off sometimes. Like, for example, I got the guy that comes in for the life insurance stuff. What is it? The whole, like, you know, they do the test your blood pressure, make sure you're healthy. Do you smoke? You oh, know, to yeah, make sure yeah, you get your life yeah, insurance yeah. policy and yada, yada. So he comes and he takes my my uh, blood pressure and he, he reads my numbers and we're all good. And I said, well, okay, do my other arm now. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you're... You would do both arms, right? And he goes, well, why? I said, because I have two kidneys and two adrenals. Isn't this, isn't the top number diastolic and the bottom of their systolic and that's the adrenals and kidneys? And he looked at me like I blew his mind. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Don't I said, you just hate people like that? <laughs> Don't you think that if you're trying to get my adrenal function and my kidney function numbers that you would take both my arms because I have two sides of the body? And he just could not believe it, but it also pissed him off. He's like, I've never had a single client ask me that. I said, well, that's unfortunate. I would like to know how my right kidney is doing. Thank you. And my right adrenal. And I said, and I bet you anything they'll be different. He goes, no. I said, yes, because you always have one side that's more dominant than the other. That's just how it works. That's balance, right? And he, and lo and behold, I was right. I didn't put him down. I didn't make fun of him. And I didn't tell him that his schooling was wrong. His schooling is right. Because that's exactly what they taught him. And that's exactly what they tell medical doctors. Medical doctors weren't expected to be scientists. They were expected to be individuals that came in and gave you something to take care of your symptoms. Cool. Now, if you have a medical doctor out there who really, truly wants to heal, then he would learn this side of science or she would learn this side of science. And some of them do. We're seeing more of that. They're seeing more of that every day. And that's fantastic. But also we need a certain medical doctors out there that are just subscri- uh, prescribing medication because there are people out there who just want medication. They and don't want to do the work. And, and there's some things that probably, you know, that, well, there, there are definitely things that are complex and can only be handled that way. What you're talking about is lifestyle well-being type things. I, I Actually, there is a doctor I worked with who does operate like you do. Very much. And she, I forget, I will fuck up the exact term. I've been to a lot of doctors. The exact (laughs) term that she has. But her specialty was with specific, certain specific GI tract problems. So she had a much more like laser focus on certain things. So there was stuff that 
my issues, which stem largely from allergies that are probably exacerbated by some of these food habits I have for sure, which is why this interests me. But my issues don't end up lining up with what she does. So I don't like see her at this point. But, you know, I was very drawn to the fact that she was a doctor who was not throwing pills at the problem. She was very into breaking, you know, I had to like track, I had to do a crazy diet of eating like nothing for like 30 days and track everything, which was some form of a detox, you could say. I had to do the stool samples and all that. And I was like, whoa, you know, it didn't fix my problems because again, like what I was dealing with, but there were certain things like in my other parts of my health where I'm like, wow, that, that feels different. That's probably better right there. And I was relieved that it wasn't just, you know, what is the term you broke it down with like medicinal or whatever. Right. You know, so there's something to be said for looking at how the how the wheels on the car are affecting the drive. And that's why I'm I'm drawn to what you do. But you know, I all all in all, I my thing is in addition to working on nutrition and stuff like that, I this is the gateway to people and some of their beliefs mm. and, and where their attention is, where their momentum is. Frankly, if we could get people to just understand the knowledge of the, the body, you can make a better informed choice, even if that informed Agreed. choice is acidic. I would just love for people to know, hey, here's, here's true chemistry and physics. Go make your decisions from then on. But when you make that decision... Do it with joy, just like Warren Buffett, just like the people in the blue zone. If you're going to do it, fucking do it and be happy about it because most people have the resistance. They got a resistance towards this modality, this medication, this food, this what. What if we could just look at everything without resistance, without right. a, a, a preconceived idea of what it's going to do to you? And heal a relationship with our thoughts and our ego Frankly, that would do way more for our health than I could ever hope you anybody could, with. The, honestly, I, I, I think that's a huge part of it too. You look at the you look at the mental side of it and, and what that does to us. I, and that speaks to me big time because I know how I my relationship with that with that stuff and how I think about it. And that's probably I don't want to say half the battle right there, but it's a big piece of the battle right oh, there. So yeah. you know, it's something I could I could reframe because I'd stop having I'd stop having the self-fulfilling prophecies, you know, that happen. Because <laughs> now, like, looking at rice, like, I'm going to be thinking about mucus every goddamn See, time. See, and this is, this, is the, this is the hard part about, you know, I tell people, I said, there are some things I wish I never knew because right. it, it taints you a tiny bit. But I'll say this. If I know, I, I like to have more knowledge. People say, well, what you don't know won't hurt you. I actually want to know what will hurt me. And then I'll know how to make the choice because sometimes mm -hmm. I'm going to eat that big bowl of rice. There but I'm going to know how to counterbalance it. Go out there. Drink it up. Eat it up. Go ahead. Don't do not do crazy, crazy shoot up stuff. Right, like, right, let's right. be careful on right, what we're right, doing here right. to enjoy. Okay. I'm not condoning right. too, too far of the extremes. But go out there and enjoy. But at least the knowledge of chemistry would let you know, okay, tomorrow I'm going to I'm going to hit some fruit or I'm going to you know, maybe dry fast a little bit. I'm going to do this to my body because I want to have a blast and enjoy, but I'm going to counterbalance it with something like this. That's healthy. It yeah. is what I've, this is how I literally outran almost every single person on that trip in Ecuador. <laughs> and they're like, but we're the ones eating the meat. We're the ones eating all the grains. And how are we? And I'm like, eat some fucking grapes. Eat some fucking grapes <laughs> and some fruit. <laughs> you know, because again, it's just, it's, it's when you know you make better choices, the intentionality behind everything you put in your body, what you're thinking about, going back to intention. It's so, so important. Yeah. Ego, get rid of that shit. And intention, make sure you're not creating any resistance and momentum negatively around stuff. And life gets so much better. Where can you know? people follow you on social media uh, to learn all about this? Yeah, Instagram and um, my website. So Instagram, show me your set. And such a great name. <laughs> yeah. I like it. It's fun. I, get I see, see, what, I I see get, what you did there. I, I get to see a lot of sets a day. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and then showmeyourset.com. Show me your set. All right. I'll put that in. I'll put those links in the description as well. But this was this was a wild convo as ex as expected because <laughs> I got to see your round one with pomp. But there's a lot for me to 
process and think about. And I think a lot of people out there will have opinions too. So let us know in the comments. But I like what you're doing because you're trying to get to the core of what people put in their mouth. And that's, that is no matter how people shake it or what they believe with how far that can go again. Like, I think that's a huge piece of, of, you know, let's call it what it is. A lot of the health problems we have in modern day society, which is a very good time to live in. And yet we're seeing things we shouldn't see. So I think a lot of that comes back to habits in this country and specifically in this country and how we eat and stuff. So you're pointing a lot of that out. It's good stuff. Thanks. No, it's, it's been a blast. It's been fun as expected. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, I, I really, I just really love people. I don't want to help them. And I, I want all the comments and all the skepticism because you know what, this is what it's about. Yeah. This, I want all the different sides of thoughts and yeah, there's going to be theories. There's going to be everyone's opinions, but that's the beauty of our freedom here. So we can do that. So Fuck yeah. let's bring it because it's all it's all good. All right. Well, they can find you at, at Show Me Your Set. I'll put that link down in the description. And everybody else, you already know what it is. Give it a thought. Get back to me. Peace.